Hello. Do you like petty middle school drama? Uh, with fairly low stakes, but enough stakes for me to talk about it for two hours. I don't actually, this probably won't last two hours. Well, boy, do I have a video for you. Exciting stuff. Um, the other day I wrote a... I mean, I'll read the post later. You can decide what it is for yourself. But I wrote a Reddit post uh, comparing my results to another Slay the Spire streamer life coach's results over the previous month. Um, just to make a point that um, he wasn't better than me, basically. I'm trying to say that I was better than him. Just like, uh, hey, you know, we're both good streamers. That was the takeaway that I was trying to... Established from the post. Uh, post got like 900 upvotes or something. A lot of comments, which you can go read on Reddit for yourself. Maybe, I don't know. I don't actually know if you can reach it anymore. Um, and then it was deleted by the Reddit moderators. This is drama too spicy for Reddit. I wonder why. Uh, my post wasn't rude or disparaging, really. There were a couple of times where I said things that weren't that nice or complimentary about Life Coach, but I didn't make them up. Uh, <laughs> uh, they, they were just things that were true that I said. Uh, I assumed that it got deleted because it was creating a bunch of drama in the Reddit community, blah, 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 whatever, cool. Uh, my problem is that I don't like talking about drama while I'm live on my channel. I like mute the names of other streamers and stuff like that. I don't think it's very appropriate for me to use my platform in that way while I'm live. And if I can't talk about it on the Reddit either, where the fuck am I going to talk about it? Um, so I figured I'd make a YouTube video. Uh, if I have something to say, I like to say it in a way that is able to be referenced by people and referred to at a later date via like a Google or YouTube search or whatever. I don't want to say it live during a stream that will be making it hard for people to hunt it down and see exactly what I said and stuff like that. So that's why we're here. Uh, these are Twitter DMs from, let me get the exact date for you. This first one is from July 25th, 2020, 11.20 PM. Um, I reached out to Life Coach, another Play This Buyer streamer. Hey, not sure the best way to contact you. I've been watching your stream a bit. Fun to see you learning the characters. He had just started playing the game somewhat recently. He was, I think at the time, learning Ironclad or, or Defect or something. I'm not sure. Probably Ironclad because I mentioned the Ironclad thing later. Anyway, I've come up a couple of times. I mean, like on his stream. And I don't know who's telling you the things you're saying about me, but they don't represent me or what I care about. Pretty sure talking about 6-0 Ironclad world record was referring to one of my streaks, but I didn't even claim that as a world record. A couple of other streamers got crazy into world records and then sort of set the longest streak they could find as the world record without really doing much due diligence. I'm not even sure 6-0 is my own personal best on Ironclad. It isn't something I care about. You mentioned my watcher win rate is 60% at some point, which was weird to me. The last time I cared about winning was in March, April of this year when I did 100 heart kills in 30 days thing, and my watcher win rate during that was about 70%. The point is not like, hey, 70% is really good. Even in that challenge, I tried several meme runs and made tons of huge mistakes. It's that even when I'm not giving myself much time to focus on runs, I win way more with the character than you were saying on your stream. I don't know where you got that info or why you needed to be bringing it up. In general, though, I don't care about maximizing win rates. I usually play one and a half hour long runs and try to be entertaining and lead into different card choices and things to show off how fun the game can be. I haven't been a huge fan of people playing three plus hour runs and beating streaks they think are my PBs and then talking about how they're better than me, etc., which has been happening a lot this year. I don't publicize my win rates, don't make a big deal about PBs or win rates, and just in general don't want that noise around my channel, which is meant to be a chill place to hang out, make jokes, and enjoy games, not a competitive space focused on min maxing win rate. Anyway, cool to see you playing and doing well. Just feels weird that watching your VODs you mention me in ways that don't represent me or things I've said. Makes it hard to recommend your content to my community. If you need to bring me up, I'd prefer you just mentioned I play fun runs at a fairly high level and didn't mistake my content for someone trying to min-max win rate or claim he's the best in the world of the game. Like, I play runs in an hour and a half while chatting with guests, drinking, talking about completely unrelated things, and don't let people suggest plays in chat. It should be pretty obvious that I'm not trying to compete with someone playing three and a... 30 plus hour long runs will focus on the game and talk through all the decisions slowly and analytically with chat. 
past Steven. Um, I was not trying to lie at any point in any of that. I'm not trying to misrepresent anything that's happening. I think it's a pretty polite DM to send to somebody, right? Uh, I was trying to check out Life Coach's channel and enjoy it, and he kept on just kind of making up stuff about me that wasn't true and saying he was better than me. It was really weird. And also, Life Coach has like 150,000 plus uh, Twitch followers, so this is a very large audience of people that he is talking about me to. Wanted to like reach out privately and be like, hey, uh, can we not do this? You know, sort of thing. And Life Coach said, hey, Stephen, thank you for that message. I'm sorry if I offended you. That was not intended at all. To be honest, I cannot even recall referring to you regarding win rates or similar. Maybe to the ones you published a few months back. Just a bit surprised how I cannot remember. I said anything negative about you or putting us in comparison. However, if so, it was for sure never meant personally or even negatively. Mostly I refer to blur in regards to win rate, personal best, etc. I don't know if WR is world record or win rate, actually. As he puts his focus on those things. Now, blur is actually the other person I'm talking about where I uh, hadn't been a fan of people trying to beat me at things and saying that they were better than me. Anyway... <laughs> You know, whatever. Um, however, sorry if that came onto you negatively. I actually consider you as a very good streamer with a chill and entertaining channel. Best Adrian. Thanks, Life Coach. Very polite. And I said, thanks. I think I came off too strong. I've been struggling a bit to stay positive with streaming this COVID-19 nonsense this year. And the competitive focus of the Spire community grinds at me a lot because that's not what my channel is about. I always feel like if I focus on win rate, it detracts from my ability to focus on educating and chatting with my viewers. So it frustrates me. When people compare the results to mine and suggest that the reason I'm impressive is my results, when I think it's really the community I've built and my results aren't ridiculous at all. I mean, this is like, this is a thing I have been consistently saying on my channel forever, by the way. I've been enjoying watching your runs lately. Love the way you analyze cards, especially when you're learning new characters. Any interest in a collab run or even just to chat about cards, events, tough fights, etc. sometime? I think it'd be interesting to talk to you about boss relic trades, especially. I haven't tried them out all that much, but it looks like they're pretty good now that 2.0 has buffed the pool. Life coach uh, really liked boss relic trades at the time. I don't know if he does or not anymore. I don't know. But that's not something that I really had much experience with. I still don't. I don't really enjoy playing them that much, so I don't know as much about it. And he said, very glad we sorted that out. Thanks for the invitation for collab run or general chat. At the moment, I am pretty busy with my current runs and try to spend all extra time with my family. But maybe later this year, we'll have a chance to do that. All the best. Enjoy streaming, Adrian. Cool. And that was the end, right? He stopped saying shit about me on his channel, and this just resolved, right? Because this is what I meant to do. This is something that comes up a lot. People are like, this is not the best way to resolve this, Jorbs. You should take the high ground. You should resolve this privately. You should, etc., 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 right? Like that. So when I sent them polite messages, said, hey, this is how I feel about my channel. Uh, you're misrepresenting what I care about. Hey, I don't know where you're getting the numbers you're saying for me. They don't match the numbers that I have. Um, when I said that, he stopped talking about me on his channel, right? No, of course not. Of course not. <laughs> so for the last three years, he has just continually made up shit about me on his channel so that he's better than me, placed us in competition with each other, etc., etc., endlessly, nonstop. This is extremely normal on his channel. It is in his chat as well, completely unmoderated. It's like a meme in his channel. The shit out of me. Um, for the last three years. He has 185,000 uh, Twitch followers now. Sometimes people refer to this as a grudge between he and I, which I feel is somewhat like misleading. I have his name muted in my channel. I don't want to talk about him in my channel. I help other people not to talk about him in my channel. Times when I have like crossed over into actually talking about him in my channel are when like it has gotten so bad that I lose control of myself and actually say something like negative and snarky back to the stuff that's going on. Um and you know I wish that I was capable of of not doing that, but This is just like middle school bullying that I have been subjected to nonstop for three years. I don't know why. Anyway, we'll get into it. Anyway, I said that sounds lovely. Hope's fire and family keep treating you well. This was August 2020 that I responded to that. And December 12th. So 
that that was I guess holding for four months or something. All right. Anyway, December twelfth, twenty twenty. I sent him my win rate over my last eighty runs and his win rate over his last eighty runs. I had one forty seven out of eighty. He had one thirty five out of eighty. And I said, just like for your information, because you spent so long talking about how my win rates were shit and stuff in your channel yesterday that people came and bugged me about it while I was trying to enjoy playing a completely different game. Um, I still remember that night I was playing Minecraft, I believe. Once this was the Among Us time. Uh, maybe I don't remember this night. But anyway, um, this happened. It was not the first time since the first messages that people had been like, hey, I heard some weird stuff from Life Coach about you. Do you want to come at? And I was like, no. Uh, anyway. I don't know what the right way to communicate it is, but it's incredibly unpleasant to have people come into my channel from other channels where other streamers are saying non-positive things that they think about me and has been for two plus years. This is something that I dealt with in the Spire community before Life Coach ever arrived. Um, I don't really know why. Lots of people, I, I think, largely what it is is that lots of people said that I was like the best Slay the Spire player and other people wanted to be like, no, he's not better than me. Uh, and I don't really understand why everybody said that I was the best Slay the Spire player. I have generally tried very hard to be like, there are lots of really good Slay the Spire players. I'm not better than them. I have never said I'm the best Slay the Spire player. I have never said I'm better at Slay the Spire than other people. I don't do that. Um, when I have presented results, I have tried to be fair to other people and say, look, this thing this person has done quite impressive. This thing I have done is quite impressive too. <laughs> Let's move on with our life. Like that's generally what I try to do. Um, anyway, like I do try to stand up for myself if other people say that they're better than me or that my results don't mean anything or something like that, because I, what else am I meant to do? I don't really know what people think I meant to do when people say that. Anyway, cool. Um, but yeah, it's incredibly unpleasant to have people come to my channel from other channels where other streamers are saying non-positive things they think about me and has been for two plus years. It's my least favorite part of the Slay the Spire community and strategy gaming communities more generally. I try very hard to only say positive things about other streamers and to minimize the time I spend talking about them in general. I have everyone's names muted in my chat feed so I don't see any message with another streamer's name in it. My mods are all instructed to delete those sorts of messages and explain that my community isn't a place for talking about other people a ton. Just like communicating this to you openly instead of not mentioning it because I respect you and think you're capable of empathy and understanding where I'm coming from, maybe. And also because I feel like the tilt that people get from talking people talking about me all the time is something that I also get from people talking about others all the time. I dealt with that by moderating out those sorts of messages, not by trying to tear down the people Chad talked about. Also, one of the main reasons I don't communicate win rates is that there have seemed to increasingly be other streamers trying to establish their worth and value as a streamer by aggressively pursuing and advertising high win rates. So if I advertise my own and it's better than theirs, I end up making them look bad, which I have no desire to do. Your worth as a streamer exists separate from your win rate, and I think that moments of your stream where you focus more on your win rate are worse than the moments of your stream where you focus on being comfortable, funny, explaining things in great detail, etc. And I'm perplexed by how you focus on your win rate given how good all those other parts of your stream are. These messages were slightly grumpier than the first messages I sent. But like, I don't personally think that they're incredibly out of line. I'm not ashamed to share that I sent these messages to Life Coach privately. Uh, he never responded to this one. He has never responded directly to me since then in any way, really. The only way that he talks about me is on his channel. Uh, often in like pretty snarky, flippant, throwaway comments but occasionally like in a more extended way where he will just with a live audience get on me um so one of the things that i was really interested in in the comments of this reddit post that i posted was there were people saying like this is ludicrous jorbs you're you're making this up life coach doesn't do this this isn't how he behaves at all and I mean, I know that it is how he behaves. I have lived it for the last three years, but also some people, like I don't watch his channel. So I don't see exactly how it works all the time. Sometimes when it gets really egregious, people tell me about it or clip it and send it to me. But for the most part, I don't watch anything on his channel. Um, and so I didn't really like 
know what it was like really, but some of the people responding to people saying, hey, life coach doesn't do that, were like, ah, no, he does do that. And also he's created a space where his chat does that and he doesn't moderate it. Um, it's very normal on his stream for people to shit on Jorbs. And I was like, well, I didn't know that. Like, I didn't know his chat talked about me in general at all. Why do they have any reason to talk about me? I have not placed myself in competition with Life Coach in like three years. When he started doing this, I stopped caring about my win rate as much as I possibly could because it was gross um, to care about it. He also spent a lot of time talking about win streaks and how win streaks just like were meaningless and weren't relevant achievements. And when that happened, I moved away from caring about win streaks. So when I'm talking about win streaks here, um, uh, this one, this like 6-0 Iron Cloud world record was recurring to one of my streaks. This is like several months after Life Coach came to the community, and one of the things he came to the community and did was say that um, win streaks didn't really mean anything. They were statistical anomalies and could be dismissed, and they weren't relevant achievements. And that he wanted to play like large sets of runs and prove he could have a high win rate on a character. And the second part of that is great. The first part of that is like ludicrous. Win streaks did mean something. They were the main competitive metric for the game prior to him arriving. But like I don't I have never really cared much about competition in Slay the Spire. So when somebody was loudly saying that win streaks didn't mean anything, um at the time I had lots of win streaks sure, but like I generally didn't like having win streaks that much. I didn't like that when I had a win streak, other people would like try to beat me at it because I don't. I deliberately play a single player game without competition because I'm not very interested in competition or that energy. And so I had largely moved away from streaks because he was saying that streaks were meaningless, etc. And it was just really unpleasant to be like, well, I, I like win streaks. So the reason that I talk about all that win streak stuff, um, we're going to go into chat histories from Life Coach's channels right now. I, I can't provide clips because I am banned from his channel. I have never talked in his channel. I've never sent a message, but he has preemptively banned me in case I do, I guess. I don't know. Um, so I looked at the VODs that were available in his channel, and I like didn't watch them all, but it is possible to look at the chat for a VOD um, quickly, and to just control F through it for Jorb, which is what I did. And the first VOD that I looked at was from quite a while ago. I guess it's saved for some reason, where usually his VODs get deleted after being um, there for a time. And I thought it was kind of interesting. I wasn't expecting this, but there's like a long discussion about um, rotating play and win streaks in this first VOD that is saved. I don't really know why I didn't watch the VOD. Maybe it's just like a massive coincidence, but this is from like quite a long time ago in Life Coach's stream. And it shows like generally what was being said about win streaks in his stream at this time. So first off, like, rotating is silly madness. You either explore a character fully or you don't. So, like, rotating play is shitty. Re-win streaks. The cherry picking is done for you. You obviously have to be skilled to get a big win streak, but variance in the spire makes win streaks not a useful metric. This is, like, a thing that people were generally saying about win streaks because other people had win streaks and were proud of them, kind of. I guess we're talking about one of my videos, probably. Oh yeah, this is like my statistics video about like how win rates and win streaks can both be relevant statistical measures of achievement in a game. Um, so people are like saying, hey, Jorbs is being unfair, life coach, you're great. No matter what you do, there will always be people trying to call you out. Absolutely fucking not. If this spreadsheet of chat messages mentioning me in your channel in the last two months was less than 500 lines long, I could go ahead and stop caring about you. <laughs> Absolutely not. 
Um, I was afraid that the whole drama pisses you off so much that you decide just to be done with it and go on an extended break. Glad that seems not to be the case. Sort of seem to think that a random sample of the whole sample is better than looking at the whole sample. That's not accurate. That isn't what I said. Um, when rate of our large continuous number of games is best. I don't think anything else matters, honestly. Achievements of other people just don't matter. The problem with, for me, with win streaks is you don't care about games after loss because it's just the beginning of a streak. For me, it promotes bad habits, in my opinion. Okay, you don't like win streaks, cool. Win streaks are just a cool flex. Okay, cool. What real sport uses win streaks or anything other than trivia questions? Uh, the answer is that win streaks have been a normal competitive metric for roguelikes um, since roguelikes existed. That's, or, I mean, are roguelikes a real sport? I don't know. I don't see how people can even come to think that win streaks are a measurement of skill. Okay. <laughs> this shit is just absolutely wild. He did some crazy cherry picking where he generated 1 million sets of 300 runs with 0.9 win rate and looked explicitly for runs that were like his, having three or more win streaks of 20 plus. There are only 2% runs like this. And then he concluded that it was very likely that he had over 80% win rate. I mean, I p hacked a little bit by doing that. The statistics is not like perfect, but what I was responding to was Life Coach saying that I had 80% win rate by making it up. Like, Life Coach. We're talking about a video where our life coach said Jorbs has an 80% watcher win rate and shouldn't ever comment on watcher to other players of the game. And I pointed out that I had had 20 oh win streaks three times in my last 300 runs on watcher. So I thought I was probably like a bit better than that. Anyway, um, what I often see is people mistaking win rate for win chance. It's a little upsetting too, blah, blah, blah. Like, I mean, I can get into this, but this isn't what the video is about. Um, this is, yeah, anyway. Let's thank Jorbs for giving us more Life Coach content. The idea that Life Coach is, like, responding to me in some way exists here. I see it less as ego and more about trying not to be so lonely. We're missing the part where Life Coach is talking about me, right? But we can uh, imagine the things that he might be saying. The thing with wind streaks is I feel it doesn't take into account stamina and consistency. Are you just good for a short period of time or are you good always? I mean, that's like kind of fair. That's, I mean, most people don't want to be good for 500 hours in a row in competitive games. Most people like want to spend some time practicing or something like that as well. But yeah, I mean, sure. Trying different strategies. I don't even mind the streaks much, as you said. In the long run, they trend to indicate the player's ranking. I just hate that a large portion of games aren't taken seriously just because psychologically you aren't invested because it isn't a streak. Okay, good for you. Is one night not straight up better? Winning two golf tournaments in a row or winning half the golf tournaments on a tour? Okay, so win rate's just better than win streaks, sure. Better from a large sample size is more impressive than a win streak. If you understand the nature of this game, you wouldn't care much about streaks. Uh, <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> we can move past that. Uh, oh my god, chat. You know the meme where there are three guys with gold, silver, and bronze medal, and the guy who has bronze is like champagne celebrating? That's the wind streak guy. Assume he does it. He did it literally. I don't actually know what Life Coach was saying, but probably something about me. Jorb is a good player and a smart person. The fact that we are discussing about win rate versus win streaks as an objective measurement of consistency, which is not logical in the slightest, is proof of that. He managed to stir it in a way that this discussion is even happening. So win streaks are so obviously not a good measurement of consistency that um, I have to be incredibly smart and it's evidence that I'm smart because otherwise no one would even consider the possibility that they were. Streaking is a terrible measurement. But maybe time limits should exist for games when counting win rate. Interesting idea. I don't really know why I flagged that one. Oh, oh, maybe it's because this response was funny about time limit because they can't even spend seven hours on a run if they tried. I don't know if that's just about me or about like all the other Slay the Spire streamers. I'm not sure. Girls in the Sands are trash talking the 47-3, so it's time to play Watcher. It feels okay, man. So. I just want to like a, make it really, really, really clear. I didn't trash talk uh, like Life Coach going 47 and 3. That is awesome. It is a cool ac accomplishment. Um, 
Life Coach said that his win rate was clearly higher than... Sorry, I've just flashbanged you. How do I... Life Coach said that his win rate was clearly higher than 90% because he had gone 47 and 3. So if you play 50 runs and you have a 90% win rate and you win 40, the chance that you win 47 or more is 25%. So, so I wasn't like flaming the streak or anything. I was saying that isn't very strong evidence that somebody's win rate is higher than 90%. That's what I was saying. Um, and this is like, this is the constant problem is that the conversation is like, my numbers are bad. Life coaches' numbers are not only better, but also mean more than they actually do. What was the win streak on Watcher? Can't you just slap Jorbs with your win streak? Watcher. Slap me with it. Hell yeah. All right. So cool. Um, so that's like a snippet of what conversation about me and about people who care about win streaks and care about those as an accomplishment might look like on Life Coach's channel circa like close to a year ago or something. I don't actually know exactly. Um, now we skip forward to VODs from two months ago two months to the present day. And what I did is I just control F for a job and just saw what sort of conversation there's about me on Life Coach's channel. And again, the spreadsheet is hundreds of lines long. Um, why does he have 40 cards? Jorbs told me that you should have a small deck, Kappa. So um, I don't really know why that comment was made because lots of my decks have 40 cards, but like how I play the game regularly doesn't have any relevance to what is said about me uh it's it's really kind of bizarre coach chat 100 times better than jorbs good work coach chat well done imagining J life coach jorbs heads up for 500k event of the decade lol so like this channel has a very present idea that we are rivals i have the guy's name muted in my channel and say that i don't want to talk about other people um as a general rule but yes, this is constantly happening to me. Uh, at the time that this conversation is happening, I don't think I had said anything about Life Coach for like months, but maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I mean, the conversation happens all the time, all the rest of the time too, so whatever. This is probably still in response to you, me making the point that like this is what... Um, your chances of going 47 and 3 or better over 50 runs is if your win rate's 90. I don't know. I'm not sure. Uh, hello, everyone. I've heard about this Jorbs rivalry a couple of times. What is it about? These are like, there are lots of comments like this, which are just like really sad to me. And they're kind of why I'm making the video because like people walk into this and they're like, wow, you're all just like shitting on this Jorbs guy. What's going on? What did Jorbs do? And then, like, nobody responds or somebody says I'm an egotistical asshole or something. Like, there isn't, like, Jorbs did this thing and we say what it is and why it was bad. It's just like, well, we just shit on Jorbs here. Duh. I think we'll have to ask the master of rotation for the rules, Jorbs. I mean, this is... In parenthesis S, we're being sarcastic here. Hi, Coach. I was watching Zach Nor yesterday, and he said your record is not valid because of Patch. How so? He did not say that. Sounds like something Jorbs would say, not Zach Nor. Fake. More Zach Nor sabotage? Spotted the Jorbs viewer. Way to misrepresent what Zach says and try to stir drama. Lol. Clip or ban it? Jorbs says that. Not Zach Nor. And Jorbs. Keck W. This is like, this is what happens if somebody says something like negative about a different streamer? <laughs> I guess. I don't know. What the fuck? Like, I wasn't there? Oh, okay, okay. No, no, I understand why we're talking about this stuff, though. Um, We're talking about this stuff because um, Life Coach claimed that he had a 42-0 Watcher win streak uh, where he had losses in the middle of it, which is another reason that I've, like, tried to move away from win streaks, because, like, Good fucking luck, like, trying to navigate that in a sensible way. So what happened with this was um, I like to do volume challenges, and Life Coach was like, um, 
I guess he wanted to show that he was better than me, so he did a volume challenge. He called it Monkey Kills, and he decided to kill 169 hearts in 30 days. And he did, to his credit. I will say that, like, I've never said that doing volume challenges makes me better than other people. I specifically say at the start of every recap of a volume challenge, this isn't a competitive category. It is absolutely possible to do better than this than me. It's largely just a matter of enduring that much suffering. I don't think that I'm better than other people because I do this and, you know, I, I say that all the time. So, like, so that's where I'm at with volume challenges. I largely started doing more volume challenges because Life Coach um, said that uh, my win rates were worse than they actually are and said that win streaks didn't count for anything. So I was like, well, maybe I can find something that I won't be harassed by Life Coach while I do. So I tried volume challenges and then he decided to do 169 monkey kills. And part of him doing 169 monkey kills was that he lost watcher runs during it. Um, sure. Uh, and then after he had done it, he came back to playing Watcher slowly and deliberately and said that he had a win streak uh, at, from before the start of that month and after that month happened, just ignoring that that month in the middle had existed. And so he was claiming a win streak which had losses in the middle of it. And so I wrote a like guide to like, this is what I think has to happen for you to claim win streak. These are things that I like generally think are good manners uh, in terms of claiming win streak. Uh, I know I've said a lot about how I've moved away from caring about win streaks, but I have set like 18 win streaks in this game or something like that. It's in the high teens. It's a large enough number that I don't remember it. It is something that I did care a decent amount about like five years ago, like a very long time ago. And something that like I have continued to set world records um, kind of almost accidentally because I'm quite good at the game uh, since then. And, like, so I have played world records. I, I do, like, generally know a reasonable amount about what that means and stuff like this. Um, and, yeah, so when he tried to claim a world record which had losses in the middle of it, I was like, no, you can't do that. Um, and I largely wrote a post about it because there are other people who do care more about win streaks in the community, and I am okay with people yelling at me for standing up to Life Coach. Um, they're going to anyway, honestly. Uh, but I don't just want him to absolutely make shit up and trample all over everybody else in the community too. So cool. It's like uh, it's like being like, hey. It's like I'm the little, like, dressed-up clown for Life Coach Bull to charge out over and over again. How you make it a real challenge? And we listened to a Jorbs jazz playlist for the last time. Miguel Fromage doesn't like my music choice and thinks it is appropriate to bring that up in a live show on somebody else's channel. Okay. I don't really mind. You don't have to like jazz. <laughs> That's... I'm sorry that you don't enjoy a large genre of music. Cheats and still horrible? Does Jorbs run the channel, Kipo? Monkey asks Jorbs is Skynet. I don't really know what this means. Um, I have no idea what this means. Jorbs and Shambles, incoming novel. There's a there's a like recurring burn on me that like when I'm bullied nonstop for three years, I will talk about it for two hours, which I find incredibly funny to be coming from a community of people who want to watch someone play a singular ironclad run for six hours it's completely fine and awesome that you think it's worth playing ironclad for six hours to do a run i'm not saying there's anything wrong with that it's just like why are you then insulting someone for like spending an hour and a half on something else it's like i don't really know it's possible also that this is making fun of me for publishing a book, which is just kind of a weird thing to make fun of someone for. I don't, I think that's a pretty cool accomplishment. I'm quite proud of that. Um, I've been here since the beginning and long time Ascension 20 player. I just never play Watcher hardly because I thought Infinite was the only way. Imagine my shock doing this. Oh my god, I feel so bad for you, Sag. Did you watch Merle? Nah, I remember they were leaking her cards, and I was like, oh, she, she goes infinite, and even other large community figures like Jorbs sort of were saying that at the time. 
is kind of weird. Um, the reason that I ever said Watcher only went infinite was that Vigilance uh, initially didn't make block and instead drew two cards. Uh, that was feedback I gave the devs. Uh, lots of other people gave that feedback and it got changed. I don't know why I'm here. Jorbs furiously saving this clip as evidence of splicing. Jorbsing intensifies. Um, this is like a community in-joke sort of thing, I guess. People just say that when Life Coach's stream goes down. They, they say that I'm looking for evidence that he's cheating and I'm going to use this as evidence. I don't really know why. I don't know how Life Coach has the discipline to deal with all the arrows and BS he has from other streamers, Jorbs, etc. So I want to like... Um, how do I show you? All the arrows and BSC is from other streamers. This is where the scroll bar is so far. Uh, this document. <laughs> I I think that that's um. I think that that is because there are cells below the text ending, though. I I don't think it's actually because there it's that long, but. Yeah, it must be so hard for him, I guess. Uh, just wondering, do people ever say that your streak is invalid because chat is helping a lot? I don't think that's true, but just wondering. People know Jorbs, yes. It's an old meme. There's one high-profile status by our streamer who actually feels that way. I haven't said that. When I wrote the thing about like how I thought win streaks had to be played in the good form section, I said, if you were receiving outside assistance, it's probably... Like it does diminish a str strategy game accomplishment somewhat. Um, and in the comments, I elaborated if you're receiving a lot of outside ass assistance when you achieve something in the strategy game, you should probably not like then say, ha ha, this is proof that I'm better than everybody else. And instead, you should say something like, hey, thanks to everybody who helped me get this awesome achievement. I'm really happy. Which honestly is just probably what you should say all the time. But yes. Uh, for what it's worth, I personally do think that um, my achievements are less valid if other people help me get them, and I don't really think that that's a weird thing to think. I think it's weird that anyone would think that that was a weird thing to think. I don't know. I've been watching Job's YouTube recently, but I can't find his new world record video covering Life Coach. Can someone link it? Oh, oh, that's a funny one. Job's in shambles. Jorb's busy encoding his five-hour video dissertation on why Life Coach's new streak doesn't count because of chat help. Lol. Funny you say that. Not Jorb's, but I have seen people use that argument when comparing Life Coach to Jorb's, which is really dumb when you realize Jorb's doesn't allow it himself. So I think what Richard Guido is saying here is that, like, Jorb's is just getting help from chat all the time or something, and other people are saying that about me. Which wouldn't surprise me that much because, like, people just make random shit up about me in this channel, and it is never, it is rarely, it is rarely challenged. I've tagged things green when people are, like, saying things that I'm like, wait, you're, like, being kind of reasonable and nuanced. No way any of the streamers don't ever look at chat. If this is really Jordan's argument, he only needs one instance of someone in chat pointing out something that Life Coach didn't realize for him to go validated. It isn't really my argument. Jordan's is pathetic. I don't remember because I have no reason to watch his stuff. Don't get me started on Jorbs. Can't stand that guy, nor his politics. What do you expect from a lib? Was this a new video or about the over a year ago or something? Seems like a reasonable thing to bring up. Like, why are we randomly shitting on Jorbs right now? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Jorbs is the guy who made a two-hour video on you. Seems like he is a fan to me. Winky face. I mean, Life Coach is a streamer with 185 Twitch followers in uh, the space that I work. Merle is here. You're just running hot for these last 45 runs, coach. Jorbs is a great player. Shame his attitude is so sour and his takes are so rancid. The running hot comment was what Jorbs said about Merle. Jorbs lives rent-free in too many chatters' heads. Jorbs is at best the third or fourth best player these days, if you're generous. Life coach and Zach have far outclassed all of his best stats. I don't know which stats. I don't know what that is. What started the rivalry with Jorbs? Jorbs wants to have bots playing a uh, banning another Jorbs alt easy. I don't know if this was ever responded to. A lot of the time people like ask stuff like this and like it just doesn't really like seem to get a response. Uh, I don't really know either. These are the DMs I sent him after like six months of him regularly shitting on what I'd done. 
I don't, I don't know what started the rivalry with me. Uh, okay, cool. Um, I want to call out Merle here. What the fuck, Merle? I guess Merle is like salty uh, about me saying that him going 37 and on watcher or whatever didn't mean he had solved the character, which is still true. Um, okay. Anyway. Uh, all right. If you want to shell someone, look on Slay the Spire. Look at Jorbs, Kappa, because he at least is actually not so cool. This is like just 12 year old bullying of somebody. Like, it's just kind of pathetic. At Life Coach, are you telling me Jorbs would lie, Kipo? Uh, this is somebody responding to Life Coach talking about 25 cards. Sounds familiar. Sound familiar. I don't really know what that is, but um, I don't really know what that is. Sometimes Life Coach will like talk about somebody else without naming me and like say negative things and then people in his chat will be like oh you're talking about jorbs aren't you <laughs> which is yeah cool 3199 viewers praying for one or win one jorbs praying for loss lol uh, i don't care at all that life coach is good at watcher like i think it is impressive but he's not like a friend of mine or part of my life so um the way that he interacts with my life is that his channel has people shitting on me nonstop all the time, and then I don't want to participate in the Slay the Spire community or recommend it to my viewers. That's like, that is the extent. But like, I am generally excited and happy when people do well in Slay the Spire. Wasp is definitely a Jorbs viewer. I think there was a Wasp, and somebody said it was a Jorbs viewer. Quick, watch Jorbs' 40-minute video on this fight. I don't really know what that means. This one's for Jorbs, for Jorbs, Lamau. Hi, YouTube. Hi, Jorbs. Free Jorbs book for everyone in here. Lamau, look under your cheers. I guess we're, like, making fun of me for publishing a book still. I don't know. When Life Coach achieves things, one of the things that happens in his channel is that people make fun of me. I don't know why. Um, here people are talking about how, like, Life Coach and 50 and 0 and possibly Streak are muted words on my channel. It's actually banned. What the fuck? Are you really surprised? Is Jorp really the salty type? It's soy sauce salty. Meep points out, Jorp's living rent-free in chat's head, lol. Which is, like, thank you, Meep. <laughs> rent-free only makes sense if someone is mad, lol. Like, you can't say Mitch Hedberg lives rent-free in my head because I think he's funny, lol. The best comment from Merle's Reddit thread. The important thing to think about is how can we spin the data to say that Jorbs is still better. So people are like going to the Reddit and finding things that make fun of me and then like sharing them in this community. I'm presumably going to the Reddit from this community to make fun of me. Cool. Uh, the reason that Life Coach and etc. are muted terms in my chat is that this is what Life Coach's chat looks like, right? I don't want to have 12 year olds bullying people in my channel. Jorb's about to hire a mathematician with this luck. There's like a general idea that I think that like you can prove with statistics that Life Coach isn't actually good because I did this once when people were asking me to say that he had 95% win rate on Watcher. This is what people were asking me to think that going 47 and 50 showed about him. Um, Wait until Streak is banned. Wait, I tried. It is actually banned. They're still talking about my channel moderation here. Someone said earlier that 50 and 0 was banned in Jorbs' chat, lol. Jorbs had 50 0 blacklisted, lol. Chat, was it true that Jorbs was watching the run yesterday? Saw that on Reddit. No, I don't watch his channel. Yes, it's true. I was watching him through his window. That's just kind of creepy. I don't, I don't just, I mean, not all jokes can be funny. And that one wasn't. See, Jorbs was right. Playing super fast at the beginning of a streak is fun, Kappa. Here we're just like making fun of how I enjoy the game. How's it 52 and 2? You read the ancient Jorbs post. So this is a really interesting one. And this is one that I don't quite understand really and is hard for me to wrap my head around. Um, the idea that going 52 and 0 is actually a 52 and 2 from a winner perspective is as far as I know from Life Coach's channel. Um, with the reason being that, like, when somebody was like, I went 20-0, I had a 20-0 win streak, 
When Life Coach wanted to think about what that meant statistically, he was like, well, that's equivalent to going 20 and 2. Which, like, they're kind of the two ways to cherry pick the data the most. You can say it in the way that is as impressive as possible or the way that is as unimpressive as possible. And he's saying it as unimpressively as possible. And people who set win streaks are saying it as impressively as possible. There's a very meaningful difference between 52 and 0 and 52 and 2 uh, when talking about someone who has a 52 and 0 streak, which is that there is only one way to go 52 and 2 and have uh, a 52 and 0 win streak in the middle of it. And if you look at the number of ways you can have two losses in a set of 52 runs, it is 1,431. So going 52 and 0 is about 1,431 times harder than going 52 and 2. But sure, whatever. Um, whatever. Uh, okay, anyway. Statistics, right? So moving on. Um, after... So what was happening in chat here is that Life Coach set out to go 50 on Watcher, successfully did so. He ended up going 52 and 0 before losing. Uh, good for him, an awesome achievement. Happy that he achieved what he set out to do. That is nice. That is rad. And then he wanted to beat rotating streaks. That was the next thing that he wanted to do. Some context here. When I saw that Life Coach was going for rotating win streaks, Given that conversation as a channel had generally been stuff like this, win streaks are meaningless. Rotating is silly madness, etc. Um, to the point where like other people in the community had largely stopped competing for win streaks, and. The community, despite having a bunch of people who care deeply about win rate based play, has never had any sort of contextual understanding of is rotating through the characters significantly harder than playing one character at a time, because none of the people who say that win rate based play is really important have rotated through the characters. Um, that might change soon. I don't know. I don't really care very much. But the fact that Life Coach started saying that he was going to go for the rotating world record streak was like, geez, this guy, that's, he's being kind of an Omega asshole. Um, so when he did that, I started caring a bit more about my win rate rotating because I was curious. He said that he could um, win 80% rotating, which I think is possible, and I think he probably can. I also thought I could do it. So when this started, I was like, oh, I'll try playing rotating a bit more seriously and see how we do compared to each other. I thought it could be kind of fun, maybe. I don't really know exactly why I did it, but I did. Maybe it was because for three years, people on his channel have been saying this shit about me, just nonstop. Who could say? Um, so here we have people like reasonably explaining to Life Coach how people care about streaks and enjoy them. And Candle says, rotating streaks in the past aren't really because someone has been going for a streak. They just play rotating. That's why there isn't a set character to start with. Fire is strange in the pro scene because everyone events rules for the invents rules for the challenges. There is no real rule set, only the community arbitrarily deciding what's best. It is kind of arbitrary. And also, who's best? I assume there's some do-your-best aspect, of course, like in golf. Spirit of the game, etc. <laughs> Imagine people on this channel talking about spirit of the game. I mean, okay, okay, okay. I did search for my name. Maybe conversation when you don't search for my name is generally more respectful in this channel. Maybe that was unfair of me. After the 42 fiasco, don't trust anyone to be fair to coach. This is just like the dude claimed a 42 on a win streak when there were losses in the middle of it back to well it's supposed to be a casual single player game not meant to have a competitive scene thank you mr tank 
at life coach. They are always going for streaks, but generally they're just casually playing. They, of course, want streaks. Someone like kind of like patiently explaining to this guy what the other people in the community have been doing for three years while he has been shitting on them. Grizzly Bear says, Life Coach revolutionized the way Slay the Spire was played. Streaks were always the most exciting, but I think for determining who was best, Life Coach brought to the scene that samples are by far the best determinant of that and proved it out. Before Life Coach, there was no interest in sample streaming. I wanted to respond to this specifically. Um, we cared about, I mean, cared about, we had sample streaming before um, Life Coach came to the scene. And the community realized that it kind of sucked. There were a lot of conversations about whether someone's win rate was 92% or 94% and whether that was better than somebody who claimed their win rate was 95% and which sample size mattered and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Because that is what happens if lots of people actually compete in this way. The people are like generally about as good as each other. And the variance in a set of 100 runs, if somebody has 80% win rate on the character, is way too large for you to be able to distinguish between different people. Generally speaking, among the best Slay the Spire players, like win rates are going to be like somewhere between like maybe 78%. The distribution of results for that will look like this. Versus 82%, maybe, the distribution of that will look like this. You'll notice that these distributions have massive, massive overlap, and we're talking about 500 hours of game time. So this isn't a very useful way to distinguish the skill levels of different players. Um, so we all already knew that when Life Coach started playing Slay the Spire, which was several years after the game was released he came into a community which already had established like what is it like to compete at slay the spire which things are good which things are bad and we had generally settled on um streaks are exciting because they are a fun spectacle to viewers and fun to focus on for a while and also they don't demand that you care exclusively about winning every single run every run that you play you can do fun things like play with prismatic shark and things like that which most content creators are making content and care about doing stuff like that sometimes it's fun uh, one of the biggest memes in my channel is dig because every time i got shovel i would just dig all the time whether it was correct or not because it's fun a lot of us here in this single player strategy game are playing the game to enjoy ourselves um so i wanted to actually like respond to that win streak is just a function of win rate number of times played it is quite silly to be honest this is not true um it's largely a function of time um which i i guess is is implied by number of times but a huge thing that's impressive about win streaks is that playing more runs over a, a time period increases your ability to get a good win streak um, so if you're only caring about what somebody's last hundred runs looked like on a character, they are incentivized to play quite slowly and deliberately to maximize their win rate over the last hundred runs, which is fine. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but it does mandate exactly one sort of way to play. Whereas if you care about win streaks, People can approach win streaks strategically from a number of different ways. One of them is to get pretty good at playing runs in a short amount of time because it's okay to have like a 70% win rate instead of an 80% win rate for a lot of your runs if you're going for win streaks instead of win rate. And then once you're like 10 and 0 or something, you can slow down and play more deliberately and try to have the win rate that you're capable of having when you really try hard for a while. And that lets you get the most win streaks. Now, that isn't the best way to do it for everyone necessarily. Nobody here is saying that you have to compete and slay the spire in that way. But a lot of people do enjoy it. And it is impressive when people are good at that. Uh, lots of people like watching it. Cool. All right. Um, I think they valued stream entertainment variety over winning world records. And so they went for variety instead of. Thanks, Tulip Meat. Remember when I told Life Coach that, like, from my mouth, 
like just like I took a bunch of time to write a fairly lengthy message to him explaining that to him. I remember when I did that. Anyway, before Life Coach, there was no interest in sample streaming exactly. Nail on the head. It's not true. You're saying streaking is best, Kappa. Um, this is like this is very weird because Life Coach is now trying to play for win streaks. And I don't really understand how he has been so obnoxiously critical of win streaks for such a long time and now he's playing for them and his community is just like, this is cool. I think there's a non zero percent chance that he's just trying to prove that he's better than everybody else in every way he can find, which is weird. I don't know. I don't know. Nobody else is competing with him. Like, maybe Zeknar is competing with him. I don't know if Merle is or not. Maybe Merle is. I'm not going to speak for Merle one way or the other. I'm not going to speak for other small streamers either. Maybe they are competing with him, but I am not competing with him. And Baylor is not competing with him. Baylor has, for the last two years, been playing runs in ways that are very, very, very obviously not win rate focused to try to remove his channel as much as possible from conversations like this. Um, at least that is my observation of what Baylor has been doing. So anyway, cool. George baited me into clothesline for a long time. Never felt good to me. I was always shocked when George played clothesline. He did it so frequently. It was weird. George would pick clothesline over Iron Wave consistently. They were just like randomly saying that like I make the plays wrong. I don't really know why. I mean, that's that's fine. You can like, I, whatever, sure. It's all designed. Make people poor, convince them that the lottery is their ticket out, and which then makes them more poor and desperate enough to work two jobs or crappy job because of survival mode, etc. I guess we're having a conversation about the lottery here. CLDW says one George is enough, thanks. Which I think that's actually kind of a funny joke. Well done. That, that's like a clever pun. Good work. I don't know why somebody I've never met or talked to is being mean-spirited to me. Well, I mean, I kind of do. Uh, maybe work on yourself a little bit, but it's a decent joke. I assumed all five world records were held by Jorbs. You were just like being randomly negative about me. Jorbs will say this streak is invalid because of this Sneko frowny face. Life coach smiles and says, yeah, probably. No, I won't. To our video on the expected value for a Sneko potion incoming, Life Coach says, where he explains two hours why our watcher win streak cannot be very high. Reality denied, over explain. Um, I don't know. This was just kind of weird. It's just kind of weird to see a large creator in the community just shitting on you nonstop. It has been for three years. Uh what was his reasoning that the world record isn't high? I don't really know what we're talking about here. Um, and Osblom says, Jorb's reasoning? Lol, lol. Which I, I have a very large, successful YouTube community based on my capacity for extended reasoning. Uh, I don't know. Also, Jorb says clothesline is good, so we should pick it. I guess that like this didn't get enough of a rise the first time we said it, so we tried again several streams later. I hope you got it that time. I don't know. I don't see Jorb's world records mentioned by the Nightbot. Conspiracy confirmed. Uh, here we're just poking fun at me because I don't have a world record right now. What world record did Mr. J get? Force and think. What is Jorb's world record, if you don't mind me asking? Jorb says all the world records. Longest video talking only BS on YouTube. He never lost. Kick W, kick W. Biggest ego of Slay the Spire streamers? Never heard the name Jorb before. All I need to know is... Seriously, though, if you analyze the data correctly, infamous diamond heister Jorbs. This is kind of funny. Is in my channel, there's a joke that I'm a diamond heister. Way to go, Bloomsbury House. Not sure why you're in a channel where people are being like 12 year olds making fun of me. It just like makes me feel weird that uh, my channel shares viewers with this channel. Like, what? What is what is wrong with you? Anyway, okay, cool. I don't know. Um, do people see Jorbs coming out with implied accusations that world record holders in Slay the Spire are cheating by using Carly to RNG? Pretty spicy takes. You guys love starting drama, lol. This is Jorbs' new campaign. So I made a 20-minute video about uh, RNG fix for Slay the Spire, which is a mod I think that people should use. In it, I pointed out that there is no, like, 
guarantee a fair competition in Slay the Spire because we run the game on our own PCs, we are able to decompile it and edit it as we will. It's just tremendously easy to cheat at Slay the Spire if you want. One of the reasons I have no interest whatsoever in competing with um, somebody whose channel looks like this um, at Slay the Spire is that if they have no interest in like moderating their channel to not have stuff like this in it about me, I don't see why they would have any interest in playing fairly against me. It seems like a, a lot of good faith to extend to them when they are not extending any good faith to me. Um, but yeah, I, I did say that you could cheat at Slay the Spire. Um, Kira Chatter has taken that to, I guess, mean that I am implying that Life Coach is cheating, which I didn't. Um, I didn't say that. Uh, I can see how a channel that is this obsessed with me and very eager to place me in opposition with Life Coach and to talk about me negatively whenever possible might think that I was implying that, but that isn't actually a thing I said. Um, so yeah, this was like kind of a wild one. Dorbs already has a backpack battles tier list for you, so you can hit the ground running, Kipo. You were talking about Life Coach perhaps checking out Backpack Battles. Life Coach, I guess, has a thing about um, streamers having had tier lists when he came to the game, which is really interesting to me because I only very recently made tier lists at all. I've like pretty prominently said tier lists are kind of crap, like they're not a good way of communicating information. Uh, and so instead I have made like 10 minute videos about every card and stuff like that. Not every card, but lots of cards. Um, that's generally how I made content in the Slay the Spire community before making content for the Slay the Spire community resulted in like people in a channel with two or three thousand viewers uh, shitting on me and then like coming into my channel to continue shitting on me. When that happened, I largely like stopped making content for the Slay the Spire community. Sorry. I don't. <laughs> what the fuck do you want me to do? Um, so anyway, um, Buzzblom here uh, comes in with a real zinger. Jorps already has a Backpack Battles tier list for you, so you can hit the ground running Kipo, making fun of the idea that I had done anything to help people learn about Slay the Spire before Life Coach started playing Slay the Spire. Um, my favorite thing about this, by the way, was when he was saying that I shouldn't play, shouldn't talk about how to play Watcher. He said that I didn't understand uh, how to front load damage on her, and I found that really funny because I introduced the term front loaded damage to Slay the Spire. Um, I don't know. It's it's fine. I think that he could have worked out the game without other people having played it first, one hundred percent. But I also think it is like very weird to come into a game after people have spent thousands, tens of thousand hours learning it and developing strategies for it, and then just be like. Uh, that was detrimental to me. It would have been easier without them kind of thing, which is something that he has said. I think we'd get to that later. Anyway, he, he responded to this directly. He said, yeah, no, I don't want to destroy him again. One time is more than enough, guys. I don't really know what that means. I'm doing really well. I bought a house recently, published a book this year. Uh, I... I don't know. I think that people like see me doing stuff like this maybe and they think like, oh, Jorbs is really struggling in life. When the actual takeaway is like, oh, for three years people have been persistently and consistently harassing Jorbs in the community he cares about and he wants to talk about it sometimes and say that it isn't good. Um, I'm not making this video out of anger or personal distress. I am making this video out of the fact that I have a bunch of people in this community and I would like it to be a community I can recommend to people, but if I am making content in this community, it feels like an obligation of mine to present to you that this is part of it. Um, also, I think some people will enjoy it. I don't know. It was kind of fun, maybe. Jorbs, Kappa, the one that shall be named, shall not be named, Monkey asks, who sent you? Uh, here somebody talked about RNG fix after my RNG fix video, which again, it was a 20 minute video that I made um, another Redditor, sorry, another Slay the Spire streamer was the person who turned me on to the idea of RNG fix. It's not like something that, it's not a mod I made 
horror mod that I was the first person to have the idea of caring about. Um, other people came into my channel to talk about correlated randomness. Other people are the ones who were working on correlated randomness in Slay the Spire. So like RNG Fix was just like in service to the community. I wanted to say like, hey, there is correlated randomness in Slay the Spire. I think it is best for us not to tell people about it because there are some people who are not able to patch it because they play the game on Switch or mobile. Um, and I think that if playing on PC, it's probably a good idea to play with RNG Fix because it fixes the RNG. That was the extent of why I said this. That's the video that I tried to make in service of the community. Um, anyway, Monkey asks, say it's Slim. Oh, uh, Slim, Slim was, I guess, the person. Slim Cat was the person who came in. Who is it? I want their name. Not the J streamer again, not like this. I just saw a Jorbs vid and saw that a couple other streamers had taken to using it too. Just wondering. Bye bye. Nice knowing you. Like, just like mentioning a video of mine gets you banned or something? I don't really. Actually, it was Jorbs, lol. Do I not like Jorbs here? He didn't say anything ban worthy. He just doesn't know Jorbs is a clown. <laughs> or use your brain, guys. This is one of the most popular games on Steam. And you think it needs a mod to be fixed? Well, come on. I mean, somebody could have watched the video, maybe, where I explain. <laughs> Jorbs has 6,969 6, hours. I think he's more of an expert, Kappa. And we are making fun of somebody for having played the game we're enjoying uh, for a long time. That's a, that's a good burn. Sheeps. In Jorbs, we trust. I'm, I'm sure that this is, uh, I mean, I don't know. Maybe that isn't, can we take that? We're, we're just going to take that as a polite comment. Thank you, Lil Mac. Well, that's why I'm asking, uh, because of bye bye, nice knowing you for someone saying my name. If the devs wanted it changed, they are more than capable of changing it. There's nothing wrong with playing the game as it's intended. Um, I know Casey and Anthony, they have moved on to other projects. They're not going to release more patches to slay the spire it is on like switch and mobile now it actually requires quite a lot of work to patch it uh and also we have full modding support as a community so like we can change it without them having to do that my response to that jerobs told me you should always force infinite i don't know like what i think like there seems to be a pattern of like making fun of me for going infinite on watcher uh, in this community I didn't used to go infinite on Watcher ever, and then people made fun of me for not going infinite on Watcher, so I was like, oh, well, I'll like try it for a year or something then, I guess. And now people make fun of me for going infinite on Watcher. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I blame Jorbs and Reddit. That's fair. As long as we're blaming Reddit as well. Who is Jorbs? Is he like the evil Merle? The concerns Jorbs brought up are legitimate for him, but the problem is also caused by himself, not relevant for others. It isn't. It wasn't caused by me. Uh, and it was relevant for others. Uh, that's why they brought it to my attention. Honestly, I don't like Jorbs. I think he's kind of an arrogant ass, but I was just curious about this community. <laughs> That's funny. The best George video was the one where you talked 10 minutes about how asking questions in chat is toxic. That's when I stopped taking him even remotely serious. Um, okay. I think uh, Erethron is probably talking about my backseating uh, video, which like I started having anxiety attacks because of people backseating so much. And then uh, when I tried to moderate it, they would argue with me. Uh, and sometimes do things like get in my DMs and get in my Discord and call me a fascist and dox me. And that was really unpleasant. That was a terrible, terrible part of my life. Um, fortunately, after like six months of daily being challenged on it, I got to a point, I guess, where the people who were going to argue with me about it had left my community, which is great because now I can stream without having anxiety attacks all the time. Um, but... Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I guess so. I don't think I said that asking questions in chat was toxic. Um, I did have a rule in my channel that there was no backseating allowed. Um, and I, I think that like breaking the streamer's rules while telling them that they are wrong about what the rules should be might be toxic. 
One more comment about Jorbs, whose vocal fry makes me want to cut my ears off. Ooh, that's rough. Just a second. All right, I'm back. All right. Um, everyone, give me your best Jorbs roast. I want to make it like super, super, like, I guess one thing I haven't talked about here is like, well, isn't your channel like sometimes full of people shitting on other people? Like, no, no. If somebody said something like that in my channel, I would time them out or ban them. Um, even if it were about somebody I didn't like. That's like not a thing that you do in my channel. Uh, Twitch Terms of Service says that you can't disparage other Twitch partners. So like, like Life Coach and I aren't friends. This isn't friendly competition where we're like gently ribbing each other or whatever. Uh, I asked this guy to stop doing this three years ago um, and told him expressly that this wasn't what I wanted my channel to be about and wasn't what I cared about. And, and we're not friends. Uh, I wouldn't say that I like massively dislike him or anything because I have never met him. Uh, the DMs that I shared, this is the extent of us ever talking to each other, ever. What I do think about him is that he runs a channel where, like, people bully me daily for some reason and doesn't moderate it. And I think that's really weird and also makes me not want to recommend the Slay the Spire community to other people. Yeah, okay, anyway. I think there are lots of great Spire players or streamers who are on the same level but choose community engagement and fun over four-hour optimized runs. I'm sure Jorb's daddy will appreciate you defending his honor. You're so wrong again, lol, lol, keck W. I don't know. Um, he was complaining about people in his channel. Coming to his channel when he started playing, Fire, telling him to make plays that were different from the ones that he was making. And he responded to that by um, saying that, like, it would have been easier for him if he had started playing Spire when it released, not because other people had worked out strategies or built the community around Spire or anything like that when he arrived in the community several years after it released, but because when he arrived in the community, people came and told him to make other plays because other streamers thought that certain plays were good. I can relate to the idea that that is irritating. Uh, it is a large part of why I banned backseating in my channel. Um, when the person was like asking questions is uh, toxic thingamajig, wherever it was, that's the questions I'm talking about. It's toxic to come into somebody else's channel and ask them why they're not doing something uh, that another streamer does. Uh, one of the big things is with with term in terms of life coach, because one of the reasons that I really came down hard on backseating was that Life Coach entered the community and started saying that he was better than other people, uh, which led to people challenging me on playing the game the way that I wanted to play it instead of how Life Coach did. One of the big things was that he said that you should always boss swap on Watcher. That's how he went 47 and 3 on Watcher. He always boss swapped. And so I was like, well, I don't think it is correct to always boss swap on Watcher. That's why I don't always boss swap on Watcher. And then people were like, Oh, so you think you're better than him or whatever? Or, well, his results are better than yours, so shouldn't you do it his way? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I was like, I don't really care that much about him. <laughs> I'm trying to learn how to play Watcher of my own accord. And yeah, so like I can relate to this being toxic. In fact, when I sent these messages to him, I was like, uh, somewhere in here I say like, I feel like the tilt that people get from people talking about me all the time is something that I also get from people talking about others all the time. I dealt with that by moderating out those sorts of messages, not by trying to tear down the people chat talked about. Like, I am aware that this has happened to him. I can relate to it happening to me. I am trying to empathize and connect with his experience here and say like, hey, that's not because of me. I'm not doing that to you. You can solve that without shitting on me. And he just like, didn't, I guess. So anyway, um, yeah. Later that same stream, he uh, had been losing a bit that stream, I guess, 
and he was signing off for the day and he I don't want to say wine really because it's kind of mean but it's his word so I will say it I guess I guess he whined for like two minutes about how he wasn't enjoying playing and then at the end of those two minutes of whining he segued away from it by saying if you want to watch somebody whine you can watch somebody else which Saturday interpreted as he was about to say Jorbs because that's how this community works. That's what he means. Uh, that's what his viewers think that he means. Um, which I thought was great. Um, after he had whined for two minutes, it's it somehow got something to do with me. <laughs> There's someone helpfully sharing that video that I made that it like clearly is relevant and serviceable to the community because like. It is even getting shared by people in Life Coaches chat. DM Jorbs real quick. We need the expert, Kipo. I just DM'd Jorbs. He said he snap picked well laid plans and died to Gremlin Leader. But Jorbs, tearless, not like this. Jorbs dreams of playing this efficiently. This is just like like people just shit on me and like over the course of a stream. I don't know. I don't know. Sometimes people will like compare me to him. Uh, like favorably, which is like goading him. It, like, I take tremendous pride in how one sided it is in his community. It's incredibly one sided. The the things people are saying, like you are better than Jorbs versus Jorbs is better than you. There are extremely few people telling Life Coach Jorbs is better than you, and I take immense pride in that. Because we have communities about the same size, but my viewers aren't going to his chat to harass him. Um, and I know from running my own channel that that isn't like a given. You can build a channel where viewers go into somebody else's channel to harass them, because the reason that Life Coach is a muted world in my channel is that his viewers come into my channel to harass me. But my viewers don't do that to him, and I'm really proud of that. Um, Although, like, I guess sometimes, rarely, that does happen. Why did Jorbs fell out of grace? I haven't. Um, <laughs> lost to Ego. They thought Jorbs was so sick for the month challenges and you showed he wasn't. Disillusion. By the way, like, okay, the Reddit post that I just wrote about, like, the drama between me and Life Coach, the, like, grudge match, etc. I feel like grudge is a really poor word because grudge to me implies that something bad happened in the past. But this is ongoing. This is happening every day of my life. It is not a grudge match. It is like, uh, you are an annoying bully. Please stop match. Um, which will never happen, but we can occasionally, I guess, bring it up. Um, why did Jorbs fell out of grace? So my like post got like 900 upvotes and somebody was like, he lives in your head rent free, lol, and their comment got zero upvotes. And I responded, like, yeah, it has material effect on my life that somebody like bullies me all the time in front of a large audience. And that got like a hundred upvotes on the Reddit. So I haven't fallen out of grace. Like, no, like generally the community likes the things that I say. You are just in a channel where people bully me every day. Um you do not have an accurate perception of how the world works. Anyway, lost to ego. They thought Jorbs was so sick for the month challenges and you showed he wasn't. Disillusioned. Um, which is a really weird thing to say because I, again, this is the month challenges that I said were not meant as competition and I didn't think I was better than other people for them and they're not generally why people like my channel. Um, it's just kind of weird. Of course it works. People are absolute morons. I don't know what this means. Clearly Life Coach is talking about me, I guess. Jorbs reminds me of the academics I studied with that don't value empirical or experimental conclusions. I don't really know what that means. Again. Uh, <laughs> and even spell out LC in his chat lol. A lot of people think that that's because like, like I am trying to have beef with Life Coach or something. Again, it's because it is necessary for me to mute his name in my channel to moderate my channel because of how bad his viewers are. Reddit is full of bitter people who like to lash out at others. I think that's kind of true. 
Guards equals social science. Life coach equals physicus. Um, which is cool. We've decided to also trash all of the social sciences uh, as collateral damage. Fair enough. The fact that there's Slay the Spire beef is absurdly hilarious. I mean, it just like, it's just kind of pathetic and sad. I it just, I don't know. I'm glad some people find it funny. I don't know. At least Life Coach Chat and Jorv's Chat agree that Reddit was wrong. We can come together on one thing, yeah. Attacking their favorite streamer is an attack on them. I mean, bullying somebody in a community is generally an attack on the community. I want to say, I don't know. It would be nice if his ego, if he had his ego in check. Can't understand why he needs this so much. Just say, I'm good, not the best, and all would be fine. Oh, so here, Bunny Rap thinks that I should be saying that Life Coach is better than me at Slay the Spire. Which, good for you, Bunny Rap. Uh, I have never in my life said that any Slay the Spire is better, any Slay the Spire player is better than any other Slay the Spire player. Like, outside of within the people who play Slay the Spire at a high level. But it's not something that I have ever said. I have never said that about myself being better than other people. I am not going to start saying that about other people being better than me. Um, no. <laughs> I think that that is toxic, and I don't think that that's a thing that you can do in a single-player strategy game that people largely play for fun. Also, I'm really good at the game. I trust myself. I'm allowed to self-advocate and think that I'm good at what I do. Anyway, parasocial interactions have truly rotted people's brains about people defending me. I'd say at least Jorbs knows how to calculate statistics, but interpreting statistics is much, much harder, more like a business analyst versus data scientist. Uh, yep, I have studied statistics at a graduate level, um, which is why when people say that they have played 50 runs, I'll say the spire and won 47 of them. I do not immediately think their win rate must be higher than 90%. There's not much drama nowadays, thankfully, says Japanese expert, export. Again, this is like two months worth of chat logs. Here is like what is being said in Life Coach's channel. Uh, if there isn't drama, it's because I have muted his name in my channel, am trying very hard not to talk about him in any way, etc., etc., etc. But if I release a video to the community, it gets linked into his channel and then I get made fun of. Like, I like both of the streamers. It all felt unnecessary. Now that Jorb's drama is over, we kind of need another beef, though. No, you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. Jorb streams is a job and doesn't necessarily like it or even like Slay the Spire anymore. He's not a passionate amateur like most streamers. I think that's the main difference. That isn't true. And insofar as streaming is stressful and playing Slay the Spire is stressful for me, it's because this is happening every day of my life. <laughs> All right. Here we have somebody asking if Zeknar and Jorbs are still on their ironclad and silent streaks. Somebody says Zeknar and yes. I have no idea about Jorbs. Mm. Infernal prevalence is there because a lot of people do donkey runs and it's a simple win con. Sometimes people aren't just negative about me, they're just negative about like other people in general. Pikachu Down says that I posted a video about correlated randomness and I seemed to be accusatory of people in the competitive scene, which like I wasn't really trying to be. I was just saying that like if people don't respect each other in the Slay the Spire scene, we can't really have competition because it's very easy to cheat at the game if you want to. Bob Benster says you really have nothing better to watch, lol. So that's what happens when I make content in this community. Um, okay, so what was going on through all of this was Life Coach was trying to um, get a rotating world record win streak. He was trying to go 20 and 0 rotating. And maybe he will return to that. I think that that is something that he can do. I think that it's largely just a matter of like patience and playing relatively well, and eventually you will get that if you put in the hours. 
I also think that it's something that I can do if I spend long enough doing it. I think that there are a number of people in the Slay the Spire community who can do that if they spend long enough doing it. I, I don't think that me doing that would prove anything. I don't think that him doing that would prove anything, etc. That is my opinion about Slay the Spire win streaks and has been for a really long time and will continue to be uh, forever. Like, I don't think that I can ever prove that I'm better than other Slay the Spire players, and I'm not trying to, and I don't think that they can prove that they are better than me. I think that it's just kind of a dumb idea. We all play with our strategies being explained live on stream to a bunch of viewers. Generally speaking, a lot of us have the goal of teaching other people how we succeed, and so if somebody is like actually better than other people at Slay the Spire, to me, like the question would be like, why can't they teach other people to play that well? Um, to me, that would be like my general takeaway. Like there's some learning curve for learning about a synergy package or something like that, but it doesn't take people who have thousands of hours and slay the spire and are very good at it that long to be like, oh, Somebody's showing that bullet time is actually doing really well on silent. I'm going to pick that up and see how that little package of synergies performs. It just isn't that hard. Um, and in terms of like playing very long runs and calculating, like somebody said that other people couldn't play seven hour long runs of Slay the Spire, like, yes, we can. We can. Uh, the longest runs of Slay the Spire I've ever played are my floor per day runs, where I spend an hour on every floor of the run. Uh, most of it is in a spreadsheet calculating different things which are relevant to the run. That includes floors where like there is an event where there is only one button I can reasonably click. I will still spend an hour analyzing something. It is not hard to do. I do not struggle to find an hour worth of stuff to analyze. It just isn't true that other people can't play seven hour long slay the spire runs and try their hardest to win if they want to. We can do that. All right, cool. So, um... Then I wrote this uh, big Reddit post, and this got deleted from Reddit. So that's like why I wanted to make this video, uh, because if I can't post this on the community subreddit, I guess I'll like post it on my YouTube channel or something. I don't know. I mean, I didn't really like want to make this video, but what else am I going to do? Um, so after Life Coach spent. Uh, a very large amount of time, like several years running community that shot on me, shot on the idea of win streaks, shot on the idea of rotating play, and just got a 50, uh, 52 and 0 watcher win streak, which is a really cool, impressive achievement, which absolutely means a lot of stuff and isn't variance. And, you know, all of the things that people in his chat were saying about win streaks, like, that's not right. It's really impressive to get a big win streak. It is a useful metric, yeah, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I don't know why you have a channel where people say that and you let them say it and then you try to get win streaks. It's a weird thing to do. Um, but uh, okay, so that was really impressive that he did that. Um, and then he decided to play rotating for, to my knowledge, the first time. This is, to my knowledge, the first time the life coach has played rotating. I think he has not said many particularly kind things about rotating play and slow the spire in his life. And like I said earlier, we don't really have a great sense as a community of like, is rotating play significantly harder than not rotating play? Because like people who care a lot about results largely haven't played rotating. Um, so this is like kind of interesting. Somebody who cares a lot about results is playing rotating for like the first time. So I thought that was interesting. And I decided that I would play rotating a bit and see if I could compete a bit. Uh, my personal bests rotating are 49 and 11 over 60 runs, 81 and 19 over 100 runs, uh, and 17 and 0 as a win streak. And I thought it would be fun to like try to improve on my personal bests. I do not personally care very much about how well other people do at Slay the Spire. I care, insofar as I care about results at all, I care about my results for me. That's largely why I care about results. But here is Life Coach running a channel that shits on me all the time and now playing the game in a way that I play the game after spending a long time uh, saying that the way that I play the game doesn't have much value. So, here's my post. Hey all, I am Jorbs, known for being 
a Slay the Spire streamer and being quite good at the game. Three to four years ago, Life Coach in 1981 burst onto the Spire scene with an extremely impressive 47 of 3 set of Watcher runs. He started telling his viewers everyone else who played the game was bad around a month into playing seriously, listing the other streamers he had checked out and found lacking by name in front of an audience of a few hundred viewers, while he was still learning most of the characters. I in I squiggly line here, fondly remember him talking about how my win rates are bad, and I was a four fun player while he was streaming defect runs with 35% win rate. Uh, that's what was happening when I did this. Um, that is not exclusively a defect sample. That's like the runs that he played before defect, and then he started playing defect, and this is how well he was doing. Yeah. Okay, so I remember that. Uh, I reached out to him because uh, I had people come into my channel telling me that he was saying he was better than me and I was a for fun player and stuff. When that happened, that's why I reached out to him. He did not set many world record streaks at first, more because the runs he was playing were often very long, six plus hours, than that his win rates weren't good. And when pressed on whether it was impressive that other people were able to set new world records, the main thing other players competed on, insofar as they competed at all, he repeatedly said that these achievements didn't mean anything, that win streaks were just variants, that other players just played a lot until they got lucky, etc. And because he has 150,000 plus social media followers, this largely killed the game's competitive scene, as anyone who wanted to compete for a win streak or celebrate having achieved one had to deal with constantly being challenged by people who had been told that such achievements didn't mean anything. And we have a bunch of people in his channel saying that this stuff doesn't mean anything, this is cherry picking. Win rate over large thing of games is better. Win streaks are just a cool flex. What real sport uses win streaks? Okay, cool. So, like, yes. I'm not just making this up. <laughs> he insisted instead that competition should be based around sets of 50 runs, later addended to 100, although somewhat inconsistently, on the same character which people would have to opt into beforehand and keep in their titles as they played. Basically, if you wanted to compete with Life Coach, you would have to change how you stream the game, which order you selected characters in, and how you publicized your stream. And otherwise, the Spire streamer with the largest social media presence in the scene was going to say your results didn't mean anything. Most people who had previously cared about competition to slay the Spire fairly quickly quit playing or found other ways to enjoy playing the game, although not always without stumbles. For example, when I started streaming more volume challenges, aiming for 100 plus heart kills in one month, the coach's viewers told him that I was doing that, and they found it impressive, so he spent 300 hours one month killing 169 hearts, calling the challenge monkey kills, and later claimed he had played a Watcher World Record win streak on either side of it, with the Watcher runs he played in the middle. Not counting. Uh, we talked about that a bit while we were going through the chat box. We saw the evidence of that there. Recently, somewhat comically to me, Life Coach has been pursuing world record streaks. I say that this is comical because it is perversely beautiful and funny to me to use a large online platform to say something is worthless until most of the people who care about it stop pursuing it, and then try to claim it for yourself. But anyway, to Life Coach's immense credit, he has successfully set several world record streaks, including a recent 52-0 streak with Watcher, which I think is obviously very good, and is a very nice extension of the previous Watcher world record, which had been held by Merle61. After setting a 52-0 on Watcher, he set out to equal the rotating world record streak, currently 20-0 by Baylor Lord. This was all fine and great. I am giving him credit for what he has done. I am giving credit to other people in the community for what they have done. This is generally what I try to do. The rotating world record streak has a somewhat esteemed history in Slay the Spire, and many extremely good players have pursued it, with Crimson Blur standing out to me as someone who sat down, said he was going to get it, and spent several months grinding before getting the game's first rotating 10-0. It's a fairly brutal and thankless category, and one I have a lot of familiarity with. I am the first person in the world to beat Ascension 20 heart rotating 7, 8, 9, 11, 14, 15, 16, and 17 times. And I've held other rotating records since all the way back when we called it alternating because the game only had two characters. You need to rotate through the characters over and over again, which means there's never a downtime run. If I was going for an Ironclad world record, I could focus less on my silent defect and watcher runs so I could have full focus for Ironclad, but this isn't possible when trying to get a rotating win streak. Similarly, if I was going for an Ironclad world record, I could focus specifically on Ironclad for a while, perhaps spending a month or two learning all the character's synergies and getting in reps with its different strategies before I finally settled in fully on the character and started playing at maximum performance. Life Coach is no stranger to this type of play. Generally, when setting his win rates on characters, he will use his best performances after weeks or months of practice on that character specifically as evidence. But rotating through characters is somewhat new to him. Um... Another, another like, Jorbs doesn't get statistics thing is Life Coach played 300 runs of Ironclad, um, saying that he was trying his hardest to win through all of them, right? And eventually he went, I believe, 82 and 18. I apologize if it was 83 and 17. I may be misremembering, but I believe it was 82 and 18. He did this in the... Um, 
It wasn't actually a third set of 100 runs. What he was doing, I think, was he was doing sets of 50 runs, and then he had a good set of 50 runs, and he was like, okay, I want to prove for real that I am actually good at this character now. I'm going to extend this to 100 so that I can keep doing well. I think that's how it works. I apologize if I am not remembering that perfectly. And he won 82 out of 100. And people started telling me that he had an 85% ironclad win rate. And I was like, who is saying that? Is there evidence of that? So like, like obviously, if you have an 85% ironclad win rate, like you might go 80 to an 18, but it's certainly not impressive. Generally speaking, for me to say like, oh, that person's like really probably winning more than 85%, I would be looking more at them getting like a 91, like, like a 91 and 9 or something. If somebody does that, it's like, whoa, that would be really hard to do unless you had at least an 85% win rate, which is how sets of runs can provide evidence that something is true to us. Now, you could also just say how many runs he won over the 300 runs. This goes way back forever ago to somebody commenting, some people don't understand the difference between win rate and win chance, which like, I absolutely agree. I don't think that how these runs were presented understands the difference between win rate and win chance. Um, his win rate over the 300 runs was about 75%, if I remember right. Um, might have been like 76 or 77, but it was like in the mid... 70-ish range over 300 runs. And it was only in that last set of 100 runs that he got above 80. So what if like his win rate were just like 78%? Would it be reasonable at all for him to have gotten 82 wins one time after trying three times? Well, every time he tried 100 runs, there's a 20% chance that he wins 82 or more if he has a 78% win rate. So like, yeah. If he tried that three times, it's like pretty reasonable it might happen. Um, so, so when I'm talking about like how he talks about his win rates by talking about very curated sets of runs, um, often performances after weeks or months of practice on that character specifically, uh, that's like the kind of thing that I'm talking about. And there, there are two things that stand out about this. One is like well, you're doing this lots of times, so getting a result that is like slightly unlikely isn't strong evidence that what you're saying is true. He actually says, he himself, I think, says that he has an 80% plus ironclad win rate based on this, which is, um, you know, he might, I guess. And he's allowed to like self-advocate and stuff. The, the problem is when he compares himself to other people and like, he says that he would bet $100,000 that I don't have an 80% ironclad win rate and stuff like that, which is just kind of like gross. Um, so, so yeah, that's like the first problem with it. And then the second problem with it is he just played 300 runs of ironclad before he reached that win rate, right? And so if you imagine someone's skill on the four characters, probably the character that they have played for 300 runs is the character that they are best at right now. And the characters that they haven't played over the course of the last several months, they're probably not as good at at the moment. The life coach has no problem saying that his win rate on Ironclad is 80% plus, even when he hasn't played Ironclad for months and has been focusing on a different character. And people who rotate through characters have to constantly be good on all four characters if you're going to like measure their win rates. I can't focus in really hard on Ironclad, be as good as possible on Ironclad for a month or two, see how well I can do on Ironclad, and then move on to focusing really hard on Silent because I'm rotating through the characters. And so it's a bit unfair also to measure win rates like that um, because of the fact that he's never at the same time been that good on Ironclad, Silent, Defect, and Watcher, it's always like when he switches to the next character, he's like, okay, well, I'm rusty on this character, so it's going to take a while to pick it up again. I'm going to practice for a while. And yet he's still is fine with saying that his win rate on the character is a certain thing. It's like if you imagine that somebody had like 
let's say somebody has like 10 points to distribute into the characters. It's like if he's distributing 10 points into Ironclad and that gives him like 80% win rate. And he is getting rid of all of his Ironclad skill points and putting them all into silent. And that is giving him a 75% silent win rate or something. And then he does the same with defect. And he discards the runs at the start of this as he's relearning the character, etc, etc, etc. I don't think that it is bad to do that or that like it isn't fun to do that. I think it's great. I think people can and should enjoy his content. Way to go. But I do think it is harder to try to be good on all four characters at the same time. And so when he compares himself to people who try to play all four characters at the same time and says that he's better than them, I think it's disingenuous and a bit unfair. So this is one of the reasons I was interested in how he'd do rotating. Uh, so this was pretty stressful for me because I myself play rotating. So the Spire, and when Life Coach does the thing that I am doing, I tend to catch flack because of it. During the Monkey Kills month, I regularly had people want my thoughts on what was going on, which were that he was being an extremely disrespectful ass. And when he got 50 on Unwatcher, my experience of it was his viewers coming to my channel to harass me about it. I have Life Coach and LC as banned words on my channel. I opened his stream to see what was going on. This was the first time I had watched any Life Coach since I filled out a community ironclad strategy spreadsheet and he analyzed it on stream and said he'd bet $100,000. I couldn't go 80 and 20 or better over 100 ironclad runs because I wasn't as good at him. I wasn't as good as him at ironclad, which got clipped and sent to me. I am incidentally 46 and 10 on ironclad since then. Every now and then he will say something about me on stream and it will actually get clipped and sent to me, which is like, I don't watch the stream as a matter of habit, so I didn't know this prior to like going and looking, but I do not like... It says a lot more about me on stream than what gets clipped and sent to me. Uh, I think the person who clipped this and sent it to me thought like, oh, this could actually be a fun challenge to you and interpret it that way. Whereas I interpret this as like, there is no possible universe where we would ever actually have this $100,000 bet. There's no way of enforcing fair play for starters. It's just kind of ludicrous. There's no good faith between us. So like, I just don't really... Like, you would need a lot going on in adjudication for me to feel comfortable about this in any way whatsoever. Uh, I don't really understand how we could do it. I'm imagining that I would have to have, like, cameras on me in weird ways and programs running on my computer to stop me from cheating, which feels gross and like an invasion of privacy while I'm in front of lots of people. Like, I would just never do this. I'm also not interested in betting $100,000 on Slay the Spire. Again, I chose a single-player strategy game that doesn't have a tournament scene, largely because I am not interested in competition in it. So this just, like, isn't a thing that I would do. Incidentally, though, I am 46 and 10 on Ironclad since then, which I shared because, like, again, he just kind of says shit about me. He just, like, makes things up and says I can't do them, and then, like, I can do them. What it's worth, because I'm going to be fair, if you have played 56 runs, and you win 46 of them, that is not particularly high evidence that you actually have higher than an 80% win rate. I am capable of being fair in that way. Um, but it is a fact that that is how many I have won, won so far, and that is higher than 80%. So anyway, cool. Life coach, perhaps by the way, him saying that that kind of implies that going 80 20 or better over 100 ironclad runs is more meaningful than it is and that's part of it all i don't know life coach returning to the thing has a very cavalier way of talking about so the spire achievements the comfortable confidence of someone who has spent years saying that what he has done is impressive what other people have done isn't and is speaking to an audience that has consistently taken him at his word i watched him bring up a text file which contains what he considered to be his current win rates on the games for characters i don't think this is an unfair characterization of somebody whose channel like looks like this and the people say these things when he says those things. I don't think that that's unfair. Anyway, he said his ironclad win rate was 80% or higher. His silent win rate, win rate was 75% or higher. His defect win rate was 70% or higher. Sorry, 75, 70, and 95% or higher for watching. This is what he said. That's what his opinion of his capabilities was. And when he, I saw that he had done that, that was like one of, that was like kind of the big moment where I was like, okay, I would actually kind of like to compete with this a little bit because 
there are two parts of it. One, he is actually stating what his win rates are in advance, which means that we are getting a set of runs which he has indicated are important. He's said what he's trying to do in them, and he said what he thinks he can accomplish based on his opinion of his own capabilities, and we are actually getting a test of whether he does that or not. We don't have a thing where like he's going to play ironclad runs over and over and over again until he gets above 80% win rate so that he can say he has 80% win rate on ironclad, even though over 300 runs he won less than 80% of them. We are not getting that. We are getting a situation where he has in advance said that these are his win rates and that's what he's going to do. And I thought it would be interesting to see if this person who has been just nonstop saying that I'm terrible at the game, that my existence in the community made it harder for him to learn the game, etc., etc., etc. I thought it would be an interesting chance to see if he could pull that off. Um, anyway, he said these were his win rates. He did some loose math on stream and said it should take him 500 runs on average to equal the rotating world record based on these numbers. I thought that was salient and pertinent because he was not saying, like, it may take me a while to get up to speed on some of the characters, or I'm going to play some of the runs worse than others, so uh, my win rate will be actually lower over time or whatever. He, like, quite confidently said that the rotating world record streak, kind of the pinnacle of Slay the Spire competition at different times in Slay the Spire's history, I don't know if it is now or not, I don't really have a large um, opinion either way on that one, but he, he said to his audience, that that would take him 500 runs on average to beat. This is a record that is the best human beings have done in thousands and thousands and thousands of runs of Slide the Spire. Um, and he thought he could beat it in 500. That's just how hard he thinks that this thing is. Um, maybe he can. I think he's good at Slide the Spire. But him saying that was like, okay, I'll hold you to that. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> if you want to say that about other people in the community, we'll see what happens. Okay, so I hadn't played all that much Spire in the last year. I had maybe played 500 hours, and much of that was casual volume type challenges, which were mostly about giving people some runs to enjoy watching. I still make YouTube content for the channel. I still post a run on YouTube most days. Uh, when I can, people like watching my content. People fall asleep watching Slay the Spire, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I like that. I like this. I like this YouTube channel and this Twitch channel that I'm on. It is painful to me sometimes to make content for the wider Spire community, unfortunately, but I, I like this place we have here. Um, in terms of knowing what other people were up to in terms of win rates, etc., I completely stopped watching other people play Slay the Spire a while ago. I didn't see this here. Um, it sounded a little bit too like whiny and to the point, but like with this additional context, a large part of why I have stopped watching other people play Slay the Spire is that there are quite a lot of other Slay the Spire channels where people shit on me in completely unmoderated ways too. And there are a lot of other Slay the Spire channels where they will host Life Coach's channel after their stream. And I am not interested in watching that content because like watching content where you are being bullied is like unhealthy and not fun. Duh. Um, and I'm also not interested in hosting those people or supporting their channels because I don't want to risk my viewers ending up in a life coach stream where they are asking, uh, hello everyone, I have heard about the Storbs rivalry a couple of times. What is it about? Um, or sharing that they watched one of my videos and getting made fun of. I don't want that for my audience. Um, so I can't really participate in the Greater Slay the Spire community very easily at all because this is happening. So uh, I have largely stopped watching other people play Slay the Spire. But Life Coach thinks he is very, very good at Slay the Spire, so I figured these were probably win rates that the best players were achieving on these characters at this point. I don't actually know if that's true or not. There, there are probably people doing better than these numbers. Um, oh, I forgot the other reason that I wanted to compete with this. The other reason I wanted to compete with this is um, that's my rotating win streak. Uh, not win streak, win rate. Like, this is 80% rotating, which is what my consistent win rate has been rotating. 
So this guy who's shitting on me nonstop, who is saying that I only have win streaks and I don't have win rate and my win rate on Ironclad is under 80% and my Watcher win rate is 80% is a thing that he said. I don't understand how to play the characters and my very existence made it harder for him to learn the game. And I don't understand this and I don't understand that and we can make fun of me and he has already destroyed me once. He doesn't want to do it again and etc. This guy thinks that his win rates are the same as mine. So that was another reason that I wanted to compete. Okay, anyway. <laughs> anyway, cool. Um, great. Great stuff. He does have pluses on the numbers. Maybe he was like, maybe he was, maybe he actually thinks that his rotating winner is 5% higher than that or something, and, and they are better than mine. I'm not really sure. Um, and it's not even my win rate like playing four or six hour runs. That is what I do in one and a half to two hour runs. And I think that my win rate's higher if I play longer runs. I, I, because I like, I don't know. Like my brain is actually overheating right now, I think. Um, anyway, I was kind of curious to see what would happen if I tried to focus a little less on memes and a little more on winning. I tried to keep up with the guy who'd been saying I was shit at Slay the Spire for three plus years. This was essentially the first chance I'd ever had to compete against him in a format where we were both doing approximately the same thing. I slowed down from one hour runs to aiming more for one and a half to two hour runs, which I've always found is slow enough for me to play the game at a fairly high level. I can get another 5% win rate going up to four or six hours, but have very rarely done that outside of back when I cared a lot about win streaks, and so I can't give much data on it. Anyway, I figured I'd take a shot at improving my rotating PBs, which were 49 and 11 and 81 and 19 for 60 and 100 sets of runs respectively. I had a bit of a rocky start. It took me a few days to adjust my play back toward win percent focus, including a couple of days where I was hungover and went one and nine. But I was overall pleased with my performances, which have included a 17 and 0 rotating streak, a still ongoing 21 and 0 silent streak, and a set of 50 runs at 44 wins and six losses, which I'm hoping will be a new PB over 60 for me in a few days after I finish the last 10. Uh, that one's currently sitting at 47 and six. I got another three wins since um, reading that post. So over 53 runs, I have won 47, which is still not particularly high evidence that I have higher than 80% win rate, and I'm not really going to claim that I do. But it's like a pretty sweet achievement. I'm happy about it. I feel like I've, I've won some good runs of Slay the Spy recently. I noticed that Life Coach had taken a break from Spire for a bit tonight, so I went to check how I'd done compared to him. I was surprised to see that he hadn't actually rotated through the characters. He'd been starting on the character he considered himself worst at, I guess, or something like that. Uh, I can add more knowledge now because I know more now. Um, he had he had decided that he was going to start on his lowest ornate character for the win streaks, which from a point of view of strategy for getting the win streaks as rapidly as possible um, kind of makes sense. Although a lot of the rotating... Speaking from my own perspective, uh, as somebody else, a lot of the fun of rotating through the characters for me is that I play different characters over and over again, and also I think playing different characters over and over again is a skill that is necessary for me to do well rotating, and so I don't personally actually think that it would help me to start on the character I was worst set over and over again. Um, I think that that would actually, for me, make it harder to get out of rotating World Record Streak, but um, he's doing that and that is fine, and I don't think it should be unallowed for rotating world record play. Um, he also had an ironclad win streak and a defect win streak that got long enough for him to care about them, and so he was for a while doing a thing where after he lost he would play ironclad, or after he lost he would play defect, uh, which is like also mostly okay. I don't think many people have done that. Most rotating players do not do that when they have single character win streaks, um, but I mean, I think it's probably... I, I don't personally have a problem with it. I, don't. I can imagine some rotating purist who would, but I don't think such a person actually exists. I just think that's fine. But but anyway, if you're doing that, um, strictly speaking, you're not doing rotating play for win rate consideration because like, if you're really dialed in on Ironclad right now, you're getting a lot of wins with Ironclad, you have a win streak with Ironclad, you're making it so you're playing Ironclad more often while you're dialed in like that, because every time you lose, you're starting on Ironclad again. And that is meaning that you're not actually uh, doing rotating play. Um, it makes it slightly easier 
probably um, to have a high win rate while playing all four of the characters over time. Uh, but I don't really have any way to adjust for that post facto. Overall, here's my synopsis of the runs we've both played in the last month. Um, yeah, I mean, I it's fine. I It was confusing for me that he was doing that, um, and because of it, I might have missed a run or two where he died to an early elite and then restarted on the same character. There were a couple of times where I was scrubbing through his runs, and I was like, wait a second, something weird has happened here, and I realized that we had gone from Act 2 on Silent to Act 1 on Silent, and he had died at some point, and I hadn't realized. And it's possible that he had like a floor 6 death in there somewhere where I missed it. But that could only possibly make his results better because I missed one of his losses, right? So that's that's fine. A note before I share, I guess. Life Coach has repeatedly said things like that people who should watch him because he has a higher win rate than everyone else, described other streamers as playing for fun, said other streamers shouldn't talk about how to play characters because they don't understand them, etc. And in general has no problem talking at length about his own achievements and advertising them in his channel title for a week after he gets them. I think telling someone's result is kind of petty and wouldn't usually do it, but this is someone who has been saying for several years that he is better than me and other people I consider friends and have a great deal of respect for, so I am being petty. Um, this is actually a large part of it. Um, there are other Slay the Spire streamers who have left the scene because of this, um, and there are also other Slay the Spire streamers who stay in the scene but have to cope with it. Um, and change how they stream because of it, change what hours of the day they stream because of it, etc., etc., etc. And so I am slightly making videos like this to like draw awareness to it for other people's sakes, not just my own. I'm not going to name anybody else, but like this isn't actually just about me. Okay, anyway. Uh... Also, if you're going to use the Rotating World Record streak to advertise your channel after shitting on the Rotating World Record streak for three years, at some point I am not actually a complete doormat. Again, this is what like he and his channel had to say about the Rotating World Record streak. Streaks don't mean anything. Rotating is silly madness, etc., etc., etc. Okay, so. Jorbs, my results first. I streamed for 156 hours and played 115 runs with run times between one and two hours. You might notice that um, like 156 divided by 115 is on the low end of one point somethings. But you have to consider that the run times are for wins. So like if you lose on floor six, it doesn't take that long. So I won 88 times and lost 27 times for a 76.5% overall win rate, which I'm like okay with. I think I can do better, but it wasn't an awful performance. I'm pretty proud of myself for coming back from that one and nine hangover a couple of days. I was very tilted during those two days. Um, my ironclad win loss was 24 and five, which is uh, quite good, but not completely out of keeping with the rest of the year for me. I'm 47 and 10 overall on Ironclad since March. And so 24 and 5 is like one win better than that or something. That's pretty pretty in keeping with how Ironclad has been going recently. My silent win loss was 25 and 4 for 86.2%. This is I think the last time I did a hundred runs when I did my 81 and 19 rotating, um, my silent win loss was like 22 and 3, I think. So, so this is like pretty in keeping with my silent win loss as well. Might have been 21 and 4. I don't remember exactly. I, I thought that this was a little bit better than I had been doing on silent, but it's not much better than I had been doing on silent. My defect win loss was 19 and 10, which is a little bit worse than I had been doing on defect. I think in my 100, my 81 and uh, 19, I went 19 and 6 on defect. So like significantly more losses. Uh whatever. And my Watcher win loss was 20 and 8 for 71.4% win rate, which is much worse than I've done on Watcher at other times that I have cared. When I went 81 and 19, I went 24 and 1 on Watcher. I haven't been playing Watcher that well recently, and yeah, it, it shows in my results. I've been changing how I play Watcher. 
because like I said, uh, people were telling me I should try going infinite all the time because that's what Merle did. And Merle said that he had solved the character. And I was like, well, I think that like getting one world record doesn't mean you've solved the character. And you have to remember that when someone gets the world record, they're high rolling really hard, but I will try it. And so then I tried it and I didn't like it all that much. And then now people make fun of me both for going infinite on Watcher and also for um, having told Meryl that I thought when he got the best performance of his entire Slay the Spire career, he was probably high rolling a bit. Um, I don't know. I don't know. What are you allowed to say and what are you not allowed to say? But anyway, um, anyway, I'm, I'm going back to trying to play Watcher with larger decks now. This has like generally always been how I personally have thought that you should play Watcher, but I don't enjoy doing it very much because I feel like you end up with a lot of Watcher decks where you're clicking on a billion cards and they're just like dealing eight damage and you spam 30 cards per turn and it's just so boring and I don't like it very much. But I want to try playing Watcher that way and maybe I'll find a way to enjoy it. We'll see. My best rotating win streaks in there were 9, 12, and 17, which are like 9, 17 equaled my PB. I'm fairly happy with that. I feel somewhat happy with these results. Watcher suffered a few unfortunate losses. I have a bit of trouble taking Watcher on seriously, and I'm only coming back to playing the character seriously in the last month or two after a year plus of gaming card remove, plus rush down at every moment, and then dying to sentries repeatedly. There was also a run in there on Watcher where I like got shovel and just decided to dig at every campfire and stuff. Like there were moments when I was like pretty on tilt and not trying my hardest to win 100 percent I don't like trying my hardest to win every single run for a month plus. I don't like doing it. That's why I don't usually do it. Um, but you know, I I I tried my best. Watcher is complicated to play well. Being able to focus on a watcher run for six plus hours and then think I'd like to do that again tomorrow is absolutely not something I'm currently capable of. I think it is impressive that Life Coach can do that. I like compliment him a decent amount in this post, I think. I ran a little hotter than usual on Silent and a little colder than usual on Defect, but not by a huge amount in either case, and Ironclad was in keeping with my winner on him since March. Unfortunately, I didn't quite keep up with the 80% plus rotating that Life Coach believed himself to be capable of, and which I consider myself capable of. My previous 150 serious, in quotation mark, runs had been 121 and 29, but I got fairly close, and I personally extend myself some grace with knowledge that my stats are including the 1-9 hangover incident, although I don't expect you to. I like post commentary on this 129 and 29 with serious runs and quotation marks, it's like kind of hard if you don't, if you don't care about every single run that you play for your win rate, it's kind of hard to actually have a good sense of where you really are because you are doing some interpretation yourself. And I, I apply this to like my 150 serious runs. Like were there other runs where I like, was maybe thinking about playing seriously, but then I just like kind of decided not to, and maybe that should count as a loss. Like maybe, I don't know. Um, it's really hard to say. Um, but the fact that I like did try to play relatively seriously and there was like a one in nine segment and a other 0 and three segment where I dug all the time on Watcher and I still managed to go 88 and 27, does imply to me that like, yeah, okay, maybe like when I do play seriously, like at least, 75 to 80 might be something that I'm capable of achieving. There's more evidence of that. Um, I don't know. It's like, it's a weird thing. And it goes back to the thing about um, going 82 and 18 over 100 runs and then saying that you have 80% plus one rate and like, well, the runs that you played aren't really that much support for it and you played 200 runs before then with less than an 80 percent win rate and like you're choosing not to believe those were relevant and choosing instead to believe that these are relevant and like it's it's hard it's hard to tell how good you are and as somebody who cares a bit about how good i am not in terms of like caring about other people but in terms of caring about like am i improving am i still getting good at this game etc cetera, etc cetera. i am my own worst critic and uh, believe it or not, I'm like harsher on myself than this stuff sometimes. Maybe not all of it. Um, but I, I am capable of being critical of myself. I, I think pretty critically about my own life pretty regularly. Um, and yeah, uh, like, I don't know. It was interesting to do this and see how I could do. I enjoyed it as a thing that I did for a while. 
and I am speaking past tense, um, but like I'm still kind of doing it. I'm just not sure how long it will last. I'm at, uh, what did I say? I'm at 47 and 6, and I would like to get that up to 60 runs, but I don't know if I'm going to try to go all the way to 100. It just like, seems like quite a lot more. Quite a lot more Spire in a way that I don't enjoy playing it that much, basically. Anyway, those were my numbers. Life Coach's numbers. He streamed for 258 hours, so significantly longer than me, uh, but only played six more runs than me. So on average, his runs were longer than mine. I don't think, like, like if you were actually going to compete at this game, you would have some sort of time control that everybody played. That's how a tournament works for strategy games. But I don't think that we need to get into that here. It's whatever. It's fine. And we played for about the same number of days total. So like if anything, you could say it's impressive that he was able to focus for more hours of the day than me. Um, that's a way that you could frame this positively for him. I think you can frame it positively either way. I don't think that we need to frame it in either direction at all. It's like whatever. It doesn't really matter that much. Uh, I was curious about the time stream though, so I included it. All right. We played 121 runs. This was serendipitous. I was not expecting us to have played around the same number of runs before I looked at results. I am not sure how to fairly compensate for life coach spending significantly longer per run than me. Competition inspired is never really uneven ground. I don't think that we really need to compensate. His run times were retained 45 minutes and 12 hours. He had a 12 hour ironclad run in there. Um, that's fine. Uh, if you care about going for a rotating world record, I I genuinely think that playing a run for 12 hours is a mistake. <laughs> like, I think it's an obvious mistake in terms of how long it will take you to get that world record streak, uh, which goes back to the, the big thing I was saying about how, like, streaking can be interesting because the pace at which you play changes and there's push and pull with that, uh, which some people really enjoy. I don't get the sense that Life Coach enjoys that very much. He doesn't have to. That doesn't mean there's anything wrong with him or anything like that, or that I'm better than him or, or anybody else is better than him, not even slightly. Uh, I, I do think that 12 hours is a very large amount of time to spend on a run if you are caring about win streaks, though, because you have to play a good number of runs to get a win streak. So anyway. Uh, his win loss was 77 and 44 for 63.6%, which was 13% worse than me. Um, we can also 77 and 44, 121 runs, 80% rotating win rate. We won 77 of them. Uh, so this is basically impossible. So I've showed you lots of situations where like statistics was like maybe slightly implying that something was happening or something like that, but but this is basically impossible for somebody to apply 121 runs, win 77 of them, and have an 80% win rate. His win rate has to be lower than 80% basically for this to happen. Am I doing something wrong? Okay, so if his win rate were 70%, it would be fairly unlikely for him to get this unlucky. So I've, I've demonstrated lots of places where statistical evidence doesn't really very strongly prove something uh, in this video, um, including in my own results, including in his results, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. This is a place where he made a claim, and then he did an experiment on it, and his experiment extremely, extremely, extremely said that his claim wasn't true. It very, very, very strongly said, no, he's worse than that. And an interesting thing to me, like, um, Life Coach has a channel where people say things like, Jorbs reminds me of the academics I study with that don't value empirical or experimental conclusions. And I think in general, Life Coach has presented himself as somebody who is trying to say that the way that he plays Slay the Spire is the way to present evidence that something is or isn't true. And we had that conversation about how he reinvented how people play Slay the Spire, and prior to him, people didn't care about win sets and stuff like that, right? But, like, you have to care about somebody's, like, failures to prove something via experiment, as well as somebody's successes. And 
out of all of the like instances where a claim was trying to be made based on data in this entire video so far, like nothing else has been stronger than p equals 0.07 or something like that. And this is p equals 0. 0.00002. Great. <laughs> so like maybe we can say that he was wrong about what his win rate actually is. Uh, rotating. Uh, or else maybe we can say like the entire thing that he does is bogus uh, and you can't trust the results because like it's one or the other. Um, right? <laughs> isn't it? I, I'm i sure that somebody will think that isn't true somehow, um, but yeah. So his ironclad win loss was 21 and 7, 75%. That's 7% worse than mine. His silent win loss was 15 and 16, which is 48.4%. That is 38% worse than mine. His defect win loss was 59.5%. That is 6% worse than mine. His watcher win loss, after going 52 and 0 on watcher, was 19 and 6 for 76%, which is 5% better than mine. Uh, and our observation here is like, he doesn't seem to have been playing as well as he's capable of playing. Uh, I think that. It is possible for somebody who goes 82 and 18 on Ironclad to also go 21 and 7 without it meaning that, like, they're playing worse. It might be possible for someone who went 70% on Defect to go 22 and 15. Let's look. 37, uh, 22. Yeah, like, it's possible. A, a heavy low roll, but it's possible. Um, I don't think it's possible for someone who has a 90. 5% watcher win rate to go 19 and 6, though. That's very, very unlikely. I mean, possible. All these things are possible, but it's it's very, very unlikely. Um, but one thing we could say is, like, maybe the fact that he's trying to play rotating made the game a bit harder, uh, and so he's doing worse. Like, maybe playing the game rotating is harder, and when people do things rotating, like, we could say, like, oh, that's pretty impressive. For me, one of the reasons to begin with that I cared about this as an experiment was this was a moment when a win rate based player who was used to focusing on one character at a time was playing rotating. And so it's like, oh, we get to see. Do these win rate placed players do about as well when they rotate or do they do worse? Or do they somehow do better? I was not expecting better. Um, and uh, we saw worse. We either saw worse or we saw that he is wrong about what his win rates are to begin with. Um, I don't know. Uh, his best rotating win streaks in there were 7, 9, and 10. Somebody in the comments got uh, persnickety with me and said I should have mentioned that he had an ironclad streak of, I believe they said 18, which is weird to me, and a defect streak of 10 in there. And they thought that I should mention those because that's what he was proud of, which I will do um, here. If that is what he's proud of, I will mention those. I think that we should mention the things people are proud of achieving in the community. Um, I am 22-0 and 0 on silent right now, so I, I don't think that somebody getting a win streak during uh, a set of play like this means they're better than me either. Um, yeah, and I, I will note that I didn't put my silent streak in here. I'm not trying to be unfair. So, cool. Um, I think there was a short thing I wanted to mention there somewhere. Best rating win streaks. Oh, you could argue that like he's trying to go for a rotating win streak, so this is actually the number that matters. He's not actually trying to go for a win rate based play. Um, which like would be kind of fair, so I included the fact that like I did better than him at that too. <laughs> Whatever. Uh okay. So concluding thoughts. I didn't actually watch any of Life Butch's runs. Like I said, they are six plus hours long a lot of the time, so I don't have any particular thoughts on how he played. I am certain that he can win more than this. He is quite good at the Spire, in my opinion. This performance is worse than I think he's capable of. Throughout this post, I think I was fairly complimentary and fair of Life Coach. I anticipate someone reading this might think it is unfair in some way, but I'm not really sure why. Life Coach does things like make up win rates for other people in order to say they're worse than him, and then says people shouldn't watch them because they aren't as good as him. And his win rates are based on extremely curious sets of runs, which he discards unless he gets the result he's happy with. Uh, that's referring to the 300 runs of ironclad thing. I thought this seemed the best ever opportunity to actually see what percent of runs he wins when he's doing the sort of thing that everyone else was doing when he started playing the game, and compare it to what another good player is capable of doing. 
three, he was playing faster than usual, so the results shouldn't count, which I assume is a thing at least one person will say. I cannot remember ever having life glitch extend to me the idea that my win rate could be higher if I played six-hour runs while discussing all the lines with the chat. In fact, we'll remember in his chat people were saying that other people couldn't play a seven-hour run. Like, in his channel, a comment that you can make without being banned from the channel is that the other people who play Slay the Spire can't think about Slay the Spire runs for as much as seven hours. You're allowed to say that about other people in his channel. Um, so, yeah, he's never extended the idea that, like, well, Jorbs plays two-hour runs, so when we consider how good he is, we have to adjust upwards a little bit uh, when we compare him to my six-hour runs. He's never said that. At least, to my knowledge, he has never said that. Um, so, insofar as I'm being disingenuous, if I'm being disingenuous in any way by saying that we can count the runs that he played after he said he could do a thing um, while he was trying to do that thing, if I'm being disingenuous by doing that in any way, which I don't really think I am, but if I am somehow being disingenuous because some of the runs were played faster than he would usually play, etc., 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 um, I'm being disingenuous back in kind, right? This is how he has talked about other people, and now I'm talking about him that way. Wow. I, I don't personally think that any of his runs were like super particularly fast or anything though. Like his fastest run was 45 minutes. I have played 45 minutes runs in the last year, including in sets of runs where I cared about my win rate. Uh, there are just watcher runs, which only take 45 minutes to play. I, it just like, you can just be good enough at Slay the Spire to play the runs that fast. Re, he was playing a lot of runs for fun, not seriously. I'm very sorry if this happened. Life Coach has repeatedly said that people shouldn't watch my channel because I don't try as hard as him to win, so I'm assuming it hasn't. This is probably the bitchiest I was in the post, and I'm proud of myself. Uh, I would recommend as a takeaway, there are lots of very good players, obviously the Spire, and there are lots of different things they can be good at. I think it is sensible to say going 52 and 0 on Watcher is really good, great work, but to also say there are other people who play the Spire who do other things which are also very impressive. And, and that's... All that I prepared to say. I just wanted to give you the background context and then share with you the post that was too insightful to be left up on Reddit, despite it getting 900 upvotes. Um, I am sure that moderating the Reddit community is a headache. I don't envy the people who do that as volunteers. Thank you for doing that. Unfortunately, I don't feel very like safe or welcome in the Slay the Spire subreddit, a lot of comments which are much more inflammatory toward me than this post is toward Life Coach are left up in the Slay the Spire subreddit. Sometimes they tag me. Um, somewhat recently, like the third to last post that I made in the Slay the Spire subreddit or something like that, somebody started doxing me and spent an hour or two doxing me. Uh, just looking up as much information as they possibly could about me online and posting it in the thread. And I think that the fact that this happens when I post in the Slay the Spire subreddit is largely because there is a massive creator in Slay the Spire whose chat is like this, talking about me, just like every day. On and 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 on. So, it turns out that the scroll bar, there are a lot of rows below. So the scroll bar was misleading, as I said it might be. It has a lot of rows of text though. This is like two months of streams. It's not like all of the streams in the last three years or anything. The thing is like a person letting this go like one time on their stream is already enough for me to think they're a like gigantic asshole and not want to support them or have anything to do with them anymore. Sometimes people are like it really doesn't come up that much on his channel. People will tell this to me. And it's like, maybe you feel that way, but that's not how it feels to me, first off. And secondly, how many times would someone have to say something insulting about you in front of 2,000 people before you didn't like them? It might not take that long, right? So the consequence of this is I don't feel very comfortable in the Slay the Spire community. I don't want to recommend it to my viewers. I don't want to make content for the community as a greater 
community. Like I, I make content that serves my channel in particular, and that's where I stay. Uh, I don't really want to grow my channel within the Slay the Spy community very much. Um, none of this is really distressing to me. I make plenty of money. I don't have tremendous expenses. I like pay my mortgage just fine. It's not a big deal. Like I said, I like had time to write a book and buy a house in the last year and am super happy about that. It's been a little more than a year since I bought a house now. Um, and I really like my community. So I'm generally really happy just like vibing with my community, playing runs the way that I like playing them, etc, etc, etc. But uh, it does kind of suck for the Slay the Spire community as a whole that there are creators who don't feel like they can make content for the community, I would say. And if I may be egotistical for a moment, lots of people said I was very egotistical, um, I do think it kind of sucks that like I'm not making many Spire side chats about cards or talking much about character strategy or things like that anymore. Because when I do stuff like that, it gets made fun of in front of thousands of people, and then I catch shit about it. Um, I, I, I do think that there are lots of people who enjoy it when I do that, and I feel a bit bad that I don't like making content like that anymore. Somebody in the um, comments on the Reddit post said, like, I don't know what's going on with this drama. I don't watch either of them, but Jorbs wrote like a pretty lengthy response to me about why cool headed was good on defect once a couple of years ago and i really appreciated that he didn't have to do that he just like went out of his way to do that for me for no other benefit to himself and so i'm on team jorbs here and i said like i i used to love doing stuff like that uh I, you're welcome or, or something like that i don't remember exactly what i said in the comment and someone was like you still can do stuff like that smiley face. And like, no, no, I like do not personally feel that I can until you deal with this shit. And, and that's how I felt like in the, in the thread where I was like, Hey, going 42 and 0 doesn't count if you lose in the middle. And the thread where I said that and tried to outline what was a fair way to do win streaks. I felt like that too. I felt like there was a person in that thread actively doxing me. And at the same time, people in the comments were like trying to engage critically with what I'd said and like criticize it or analyze it as though we were talking on equal ground or something like that. This was happening while I was actively being doxed in the thread. Uh, and I can't talk to you on equal ground or respond fairly to criticisms and stuff. If somebody's actively doxing me and that is less important to you than some post about wind streaks inside the spire, like the bullying and the doxing and the shit like that needs to be more important to you than the thing that we're talking about with Slide the Spire for me to feel safe talking about Slide the Spire with you. Um, for a long time, I felt really uncomfortable doing any live events because this stuff was going on. Because this is a lot of different people. Like, sometimes you'll see the same uh, person saying mean stuff about me, but there are a lot of different people saying things about me. And so if I, like, go to a convention or go to a live event in Seattle or something like this, I don't really know if one of the people there is somebody who watches Life Coach and sees the scuff get said about me all the time and maybe they like actively wish me harm, or maybe they don't wish me harm, but they're just coming to me in extremely bad faith, planning to make fun of me later or something like that, or to poke fun of me at the event. I don't know. And so uh, it makes me uncomfortable in terms of making stuff for the larger side of the community. It makes me uncomfortable in terms of like live, ex live events and being vulnerable in those spaces. Although more recently I have been doing live events with my community and they have been incredible and awesome and everybody's incredible in my community um so yeah that's nice um yeah those are the material ways in which it affects my life uh and it like changes how i'm able to play like the spire i do not generally feel able to do things like advertising my achievements on my channel title while i'm streaming every day I don't like streaming at the same time as Life Coach. 
like I actively try not to stream during the part of the day that he streams. Um, because it's really unpleasant to have somebody come in while you're performing for an audience of 1500 people or, or whatever and start harassing you about life coach. And the people who go into my channel and say things like the word is banned, it's actually banned, what the fuck, are you really surprised? Like these people are coming into my channel to try to work out what's going on in my channel. And then when they see that the word is banned, they will often challenge me on it. Like, this isn't contained to life coaches. Sorry, I didn't scroll down enough. This isn't contained to life coaches community. This is on Twitch where you can click one button and go from this chat to my chat. Um, so that is that drama post of the century. Um, I hope the takeaway is not that I tried to say I was better than life coach. I hope the takeaway is also not that I have like a grudge against life coach or some like childlike thing based on the past or something like that, because like, no. There is active bullying happening toward me every day of my life in a community that is directly adjacent to mine, um, to my work, <laughs> to my place where I do my job. Um, and grudge isn't really an appropriate word for that, in my opinion. Uh, yeah. Sorry for the less happy than usual video, maybe, but it is what it is. <laughs>